Hello, hello. 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 Oh. All right. Good to see you. Hello. Hello. Oh, and even a video. That's awesome. That's a million points. And it and it and it rhymes with palindrome or word that she used, but it doesn't rhyme with Latvia. Right, right. Okay. Right. And it is a palindrome, but obviously you know that. Yes, yes, of course, of course. I really wanted to name one of my children Otto for that. Okay. All right. Hello. All right. Uh, wait. So John. Um okay. Hello, hello. I, it's great to see you guys. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to say, right, hello to Hannah because of the video. I'm going to say hello to Yulia because of the picture. I'm going to say hello to Norwin because of the picture. I'm going to say hello to Elena because of the picture. Hello to Shash. Oh, oh, it worked. What a crazy incentivizing program. <laughs> oh my God. All right. It's even better than points. It's like a hello. And hello to Shasha. Okay. And then oh, your cousin's name is Otto. Oh my God. That's crazy. That's cool. Um, oh, and more people here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I'm being all weirdo. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. All right. I'm going to answer that. Dear, I'm going to warn you right now. There's possibly. Okay. Let's say right now. Okay. So, oh, and hello, Kazi. Thank you for showing the picture. Hello, Kareem. Thank you for showing the picture. Um, I think that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, good afternoon, Norwin. Thank you. Hello, Quan. Hello, Elena. I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? Thank you for asking. I'm like better now um, as a result of that. Hello, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, Hannah and Otto and Anna and a man, a plan, a canal, palinger. Okay, whatever, whatever. Um, there's, oh, there's more people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm also... I, Okay, I've got it. Well, no, wait, wait. All right, hold on a second. Hold on, getting confusing here. Okay, so I'm back to, um, oh, a lot of people. Okay, okay. Um, wait. Hello, Grisella. Hello, Yulia. Oh, and we're still in the mode where I'm still mispronouncing people's names. And I and please forgive me. Please keep correcting me until I stop doing that. But I think it's Grisella. Hello, Diana. Oh, more people, more people. Sorry. Um, good afternoon, Asmita. Hello, Almadina. Um, good afternoon, Kazi. I think I said that. Good afternoon, Adriana. Uh, I think that's okay. Oh, more people, more people, more people. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, hello, Marlon or Marilyn. So, oh, more people. Oh, wait, no, people coming in and out. Internet problems. Okay, okay. And then, uh, Okay, we have so. Oh, and more actual real people coming. Thank you, Kazi. That's awesome. Who else did I not? Hello, Charles. If I didn't say hello, Janelle. If I didn't say, and thank you for showing a picture. Uh, I think it's Janelle. The, hello, Alex. Thank you for saying so. I appreciate it. Hello, Ivana. I think it is, and thank you. Hello, Marlon. I think it is. It might be Marilyn. You'll tell me. Al Medina, hello, I said. Kareem, hello, I said, okay. And again, this is not secret attendance taking. I probably, if you're not here, I'm not thinking about you. It's just, if you're here, I am thinking about you. Um, yes, hello, Janelle. And am I saying your name right, Janelle? Or you can tell me privately or publicly, um, but okay. And hello, Alex, okay, okay. I think that's, okay, good. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. That counts as closing the conversation, by the way. Oh, you did, ah. Okay, okay. Um,
Okay, um, wait, wait, so uh, what did I just, so I am saying to Nelson, right? That's good. What was I just going to say? Oh, yeah. And then she said, yes, I am saying it right. Oh, well, maybe that was private. I'm sorry. But, 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 but if I don't, if I didn't mention last time, I'll explain this time. One of the game portals, one of the opportunities to get points is, and, you know, one of the ones that's like not every day that's due October 1st. And, I'll, and I know we've only met once before, so I'm going to re-explain all that stuff where it's probably still getting more clear to people. But one of the game portals that I believe has been opened is called Closing a Conversational Path. And what that means in short is anytime you like, well, just that, you close down a conversation, i.e. an example just happened right now, and you get points for this, believe it, as weird as that is. Like I said, am I... Well, I said, am I pronouncing your name right? And then she said, yes, you did. I.e. she like acknowledged, she meaning Janelle, acknowledged my existence, like acknowledged that she heard my question, totally answered the question and allowed me to move on with my life, right? Like I didn't sit there stewing and wondering, like we both feel like a human being now. The class, It wasn't about the whole class, but the whole class can move on because she did that. In my mind, that is like super considerate, super helpful, super attentive. And it's, in my mind, it's called co closing a conversational path, another more subtle version. Um, maybe I said this last time and forgive me. I mean, I'm talking to everybody right now. Just again, this is all part of like getting to know me, getting to know how the class works, or at least this portion of the class. Another version of closing a conversational path, the more subtle and possibly more, more important maybe version or, or less obvious version. Oh, wait, more people coming. Sorry, hold on one second. Uh, and you might say, but get rid of the waiting room. Yeah, everyone, but the waiting room is a um, If one of you asks me a question, and again, forgive me, please, if I already explained this last time, but say one of you asks me a question, and it could even be in private or in public, but if one of you asks a question, could be about physics um, itself, or it might be about like a homework procedure, whatever, whatever. But if one of you asks me a question, and then I, and I answer it, if you write in the chat, like, thanks, got it. Or like, that's clear now, thank you. Or like, you can move on now or anything like that. Or, or you could write in the chat, like, still not clear. Could you expand on blah? Or you didn't quite answer my question yet. Or, okay, follow up. But anything to show, like anything to allow me, anything to like drive my conversational car is really helpful. If you ask me a question and then I answer it, if you can, especially because I tend to go on and on and on, as y'all can see. So if you ask, if any of you ask me a question, simple or hard, and I answer it, and then I, I like I answer it, please let me know in the chat or vote or whatever, so that we can all move on and I can feel better and you can feel better. And if you do that, just screenshot it or whatever, or just remember it and jot it down in the closing a conversational path portal and you get points for that. It's just like one of those things that you should get points for. If you never do it, don't worry about it and just don't submit it and you just won't get points. But we're just here to try to like reward and encourage every kind of activity or behavior that can just keep us all functioning as an actual class despite our lack of physical proximity. So, so like literally Janelle already did that today. So she should totally submit that for points. I'm sure other, uh, oh, that's okay. I'm looking in the chat now. There's some good questions here. Wait, and then we're, we'll start. Okay. Hello, Fahima. First of all, thank you for coming. Awesome. Now, Kazi's question, totally good question. Totally fair question. Okay. I have to be subtle, but I have to be careful about this. Kazi's question is so important and so great and so totally shows, obviously, that Kazi is like paying attention up to this whole deal and caring about it. But unfortunately, I have to say the answer is no. <laughs> so I feel bad. Like, it's a great question. And somehow, actually, Kazi should even get points for that question. And I'll figure out a way. Well, okay, obviously, Kazi gets points just for participating at all. You know, but there may be another, because that is definitely, and, and you'll see, I'm just going to keep on opening up portals. Every time I think of something that I think is good and helpful that any one of you does, then I just want to make it an opportunity for all of you to be rewarded for that. So there's something about Kazi's question that I really like, also because it's sort of like asking me what the best mode of us communicating out of the class is. And email is good, but I have to say the answer, sadly, as good of a question it is as it is, sadly, the answer is no, um, because the whole point, because the point of the all these portals 
point of all these, oh, more people coming, sorry, hold on, hold on. The point, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to the email communication. And we can talk more about that. I also heavily encourage text communication with me. If I didn't already tell you this last week and I'll tell you again this week, I'll give you my number if I didn't already and you are allowed to text me. I encourage it if you do it in a certain kind of a way. So it's not that I don't want texting or email out of class, but they are for you and for me. Like when you text me or when you email me, that has a lot of benefits to you and to me. And it certainly shows that you're in the class, caring about the class and all that. But because it's manifestly private and manifestly outside of class time, what it doesn't do, like the one thing it doesn't really accomplish is help us all feel more like a communication group, which as cheesy as that sound it, it sounds is kind of really what I'm trying to do here with, with the whole game. I'm hoping to make, because I think Zoom learning and teaching like this is like so torturous. It's so hard on all of us, like including me, but especially you. It's really hard to sit in front of a computer for freaking two and a half hours as you're being uh, you're like plus two and a half hours yesterday, the way you're being asked to do, it's really hard. And it's really hard not to just turn this into like a document exchange, right? And again, don't get me wrong. You are allowed to walk back and forth from your computer. You're allowed to turn off your screen and go get a drink, do whatever. Like I get all that. Like you have to stay sane. But what I'm trying to do is make it we're trying to make the time as livable and as human and as interactive and as non-torturous as possible. And that means the more of you guys, like, like the more you participate, just the more you'll stay awake and care, right? We all know that. Like, like people just, they pay attention when they themselves are talking. They don't pay attention as much when other people are talking. That's why I can stay awake through this because I'm just talking, talking, talking. But so sadly, so the point of all these game things, more people coming, is really to incentivize you to give you as many points as I can, left and right and center, to just keep us all buzzing and alive together for two and a half hours. Therefore, I, yes, please do email me when you have questions. Yes, do please text me when you have questions. Like, And I will respond. I have gotten a lot better, but I, I do respond. And I respond fairly quickly, generally, I hope you'll find. But I'm not going to give points for that, because that's that's like, it's for a different purpose. Um, so, but I will say this it, again, it was a great question. It was Kazi's question. And if Kazi puts in the chat, anything like, okay, got it. I understand. Or any, maybe, he, maybe Kazi already did. I'm not even looking yet. But if Kazi puts anything in the chat or any, or, or says how that, okay, I hear you. Like I, then definitely Kazi can and should submit that that moment alone will go into the closing a conversation portal. And that's points right there. Not that, you know, rather than the emailing, that's points right there. And, and you know, I'm saying that also because here's a case, here's a case where I don't even like the answer. Like, I feel like I'm giving you bad news with the answer to your question. So if I even saw in the chat, like, okay, I got it. Like, I also, it also serves the other human purpose of me now not feeling like, uh oh, I think he's gonna firebomb, or I think Kazi's gonna like firebomb my house, or like, uh oh, I think I really just crushed the spirit of Kazi, and now Kazi's like never ever gonna come to this class again because I totally just said something so mean. Like, if Kazi can just even acknowledge, like, no, no, I got it, it's cool. Then also, we both like emotionally can go on better. And I know this is all very cheesy. But I'm extra cheesy in a Zoom class because I feel like what's missing in a Zoom class is the cheese, if you know what I mean. Like, um, so I hope that answer was clear. Um, oh, oh, all right. And even the class even said LOL. So now I feel okay, okay. So oh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, that's so nice. That's what I see. And now everybody's okay. So all right, but that is thank you. I appreciate it. So that counts as closing a conversation. Cause you should totally submit that. I hope that's clear to everybody. Um, okay, now. Oh, oh, and that's a good, all right, so now I'm going back to the chat, and we got a lot to do today, obviously, but I'll also say, you'll notice, as long as you keep things coming in the chat, I will try to keep answering them. I'd rather this be more like a podcast or whatever, or like a destiny, like a, you, if you know who that is, like a YouTube thing or whatever, then, then, then a class. I, I will just keep it until a certain point. I will just keep answering things in the chat. And the more I'm doing that, the more I do feel like you guys own the class and that's best. So I do have an agenda today. We have a lot to go over, including two homeworks that many of you killed yourselves uh, to do already. But yeah, let me continue with the chat first and, and keep them coming until otherwise notice. Um, I'll also say very quickly, we really do have a curriculum in this class, believe it or not, it might not be obvious. 
In fact, the curriculum that Joe and I, that Walters and I do in this class, we love more than pretty much any other. I mean, we spent a long time developing it. Um, it really does have a beginning, middle, and end. Like there really is an end, like a punchline that we're trying to get you to. There is a point to all the material. None, all of it is, is chosen for a reason, blah, 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 blah. Like we love the material. It came from, well, it came from the universe, but but even, and there is a sequence where like we're supposed to accomplish a certain thing every week. You might already be seeing that. There's like motion one, motion two, motion three. There is a structure yet, yet at the same time, at the same time, um, at the same time, there's no government looking over our heads telling us when to meet our certain structural points. And if we fall behind on one point, we catch up the next week. Like what I'm trying to say is if I speak fast, it's just because I speak fast. Like I would rather let you guys drive. And so would Joe, we would rather that you drive the train than us, as long as we always are watching outside to make sure the train isn't crashing. So so like, in other words, I'm trying to say if we, I have things to get to today, but honestly, if we spent two and a half hours and somehow it was like answering all your questions and somehow talking about physics in some sort of way that even just seemed spontaneous and organic, but was answering our questions, we would all live with that. I would not have a heart attack and like the government wouldn't like defund the class or something like that. So that's also to say like, we're not actually in a rush. I mean, we ultimately have to get places, but we know how to get there. We will. Um, so, okay, okay. So, so Fahima's question, great question, great question. If you ever use your voice in this class, first of all, let me remind you, you get automatic reward for that period. Even if I don't right away know whose voice it is, but if you use your voice in this class, there's already a portal for that called speak now or forever hold your chat, I think it's called. The minute you use your voice, just remember that you did, like if you ask me a question or answer something with your voice, I'm not saying you have to prove it. Nothing about this is about proving. It's about reminding and registering. If you use your voice in this class today at all, make a mental note of what you asked or what you said. And then in that, open up that portal, speak now and forever hold your chat. And even just write down, I'm the one that asked you about your sister or whatever. Like I'm the one that asked you about Hooke's law in physics, or I'm the one that answered the question, what is Hooke's law? You don't have to prove it. You don't have to prove, it's not about proving. Number one, you're just reminding me, number one, I actually have a very good memory. Like, I mean, I did well in school. Like if you just remind me, I will remember that that happened. And, and three people are not all gonna claim that they asked the same question. And I don't think you're gonna lie because I trust people until there's reason not to, like it really is innocent until proven guilty. And you'd be silly, like if you lied once, you might get away with it. But if like every day you're, you're submitting in the portal, like I used my voice today to talk about Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Like in every day you do that, I mean, of course it's gonna catch up with you and I'm no, I'll know you're lying. And then I'm gonna think you're a very weird, strange person. Like, so you're not, so if you use your voice, just remind me of that in the portal. And that's what you're doing. You're just reminding me and you're just asking for the points so that I can give them to you and I'll give them to you. You don't have to prove it. Now, how do I know it's you? Which I think is actually Fahima's question. A couple of things. Number one, the minute any of you use your voice, you, I think you know this. I think this is true on your Zoom end as well. If you use your voice, like, you know, your box does become blue. And like, depending on what view I'm in, if I'm in speaker view or whatever, which I usually am, usually, although not right now, um, then like, you know, your box will overtake my box and I'll see that it's you, which is a really good thing. So I'll usually know, but number two, like if I miss it or I just hear someone, I'm going to try to say like, wait, who was that? Was that Fahima? Like, because we're trying to be human here. I will never, ever, ever, I will never deliberately, intentionally, like call attention to someone who's doing something wrong or who, I will never call attention to someone who's not looking for attention at that moment. But I am going to constantly try to publicly recognize and publicly draw attention to anybody who's doing anything good. Like, so if you ask a question, I might say, oh, wait a second, was that Hannah? Like, and then hopefully Hannah understands. I'm not trying to call on Hannah. Like, I guess I'm doing that right now by accident. I'm sorry. But I wouldn't be trying to draw. I would be thinking, oh, was she just asking a question? And then hopefully she'd be like, yeah, that's me. And then we both know. And then for sure, I'm going to remember, by the way, for sure, when you submit it in the voice um, portal, like there won't be any ambiguity, but if I ever say your name, it's because I think you're doing something good right then. I promise. 
If I think you're cutting class or missing or not paying attention or not doing the work, I'm not pointing that out. I'm not interested in that. That's between you and your soul. Like seriously, that's between you and your deepest, most innermost quarks and electrons. Like when you're doing the wrong thing, that's your business. My business is here to reward and re reinforce and just demonstrate what's good. Um, also, also if you cut class or, I'm that just watch the video and get the material. You're still responsible for the material, but I'm not going to hunt you down. If you if you have a legitimate thing, like you have to go to the hospital instead of class. Sure, as a human being, if you feel like it, you can tell me. You could say, "Listen, I missed your class. I have to go to the hospital." But that's because you're telling me as a human being because we're human beings. I'm not going to ask for a freaking doctor's note or whatnot. Like all that is nonsense to me. I mean, with all due respect, like if you're at the hospital and you want to tell me, I will believe you and I, you will have my sympathy and you don't have to pr produce a note. And like, similarly, like anybody who is in the hospital every single day and produces a note every single day, I don't really care about the note. I just know they're not really taking the class, right? It's not about proof. It's about principles and patterns, if that makes sense. So I'll know it's your voice unless I don't, in which case I'll ask, in which case tell me, unless it wasn't. In which case, don't. Um, okay, wait. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, so that's okay. I'm sorry. I have a question. Please, yes. Go. Does this um, game, like assignments, do they apply only for this class or for lab portion of the class as well? Oh, wait. That is a great question. And sorry, I didn't see you a second ago. And thank you for raising. I screenshotted some stuff like of my yeah picture to post it in the assignments, but I wasn't sure if that's applied for the lab or like as well. Oh, okay, okay. That is a great question. That's a super great question. Number one, let me say, you know what? I never even opened a portal yet for like great questions. I, I should do, or something like that. I should do that and I will. Number two, obviously Yulia is getting, just to be clear, already for today, Yulia should be double dipping. She should be for turn number two, that's due 1159. She obviously can put in there that she, you know, for just the regular every day, like, did I participate at all? She certainly should write in there. I showed my video and I asked a question and she gets those five points, but she should also, just to be clear to everybody, like she already knows this part, but I'm just saying to everybody, again, to make it more clear, Yulia also, anytime she wants before October 1st, should also put that exact same entry into the video portal because she's showing video now. Also, I might open up a portal for anybody who like literally electronically raises their hand because that usually does get my attention and I, it, I, I fail this time. But now as to her actual question, that is a really good question. Here's the most, uh, that's a tricky one. Here's the most honest thing I could say right now. Right now, I mean, because I am the one that does these portals and everything and Joe definitely does not. Like, so certainly even though this should apply to lab, like no matter what, if you, if you do good things in life, you would you would still have to apply them to these portals that you know that I manage um, because they're they are a me thing, and so it's, it's so let me say this, um, but it, so it's slightly tricky because if you do cool things in lab, like if you show a video or this or that, but then you submit them here. Uh, Okay, you know what I'm gonna do for that? Because it will get a little tricky. And also it's a little bit, again, totally fair question. So also when I'm done with this long answer, if Yulia puts into the chat, like, got it, just the same way Kazi did before, that's more points for Yulia right there. And it also helps me with my guilt over this. But I'm gonna say right now don't, that it's kind of like the email texting thing, even though it is great for you guys to participate in lab and we want that, of course, it's a little tricky for me if I start setting up a whole reward system for what you do over there because it doesn't really help me or this group here today. And it'll start getting tricky because there I can't rely on my memory. Like there I didn't experiencing it, experience it. So then it would be a little bit more about like proving and screenshots and that gets into a, like a mode that I don't really want us to be in. So what I'm gonna say is this, I will remember, I'm not gonna do it right now, but what I will do is start opening up portals that are for what you do in lab, just so at least we can keep this clean and straight. Like I will at least open up a game portal that says like, any way you participated in lab, screenshot it or show it or remind me and that's eight points. And maybe I'll start subdividing making more than one. But for right now, in other words, because I'm the one that manages all this aspect of the course, 
For right now, I'm going to say, wait until I open up portals that literally have the word lab somehow in the title. If this gets rich and robust enough, maybe I'll even make like a whole separate section called like game lab or something. But so for right now, I will, because it's a good question, because I do want you guys to participate in lab, I will like give points for that, but make sure that the portal actually has the word somehow lab in it for us to do that. But that's a very fair question. Professor, I already submitted the screenshot with, with Mr. Walter, Walter, so I don't think oh. I can submit that. Oh, wait, wait. You submitted a screenshot of Mr. Walt, of Professor so Walt? I was just gonna show the, that I'm showing the video of myself in the class and the, he happened to be in the picture, so. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. And this, <laughs> no, that's totally fine. I mean, I, I miss the guy. I haven't seen him in a while, actually. I mean, I think I remember what he looks like, but no, that's fine. And also, listen, any of you, if you submit anything to Walters and he does give you points for it, like all the power to you. I just, I'm not sure he has a system yet for that. But no, yeah. And and again, it's all, you can totally double dip and triple dip and all of that. Like, even if you already, I mean, if you submit it in one portal and it sort of applies, but you see another, if I open up another portal now or later, that still applies to something that you already submitted, that is totally fine. Like you're just trying to grab as many points as you can from wherever, um, you know, again, so if that makes sense, but um, they are like Mario coins, so to speak. Um, and yes, I will, okay, so I'm go going back to the chat. The main actual purpose of today is to start going over the homework assignments, absolutely. We're going to talk directly about them. And um, as we go through, I'm going to be talking about the material. And we won't finish both of them today. I have to warn you of that, too. And it's OK. And you'll see that you, um, the next homework assignment for lecture, anyway, is not actually due next week. It's due two weeks from now. So we have time to catch up. I mean, I time to, we are going to start going over the homeworks. We won't actually finish them today, I don't think. But but it is understood, and it's always understood in physics, you are asked to try the homework before we talk about them. Like, it's not the old-fashioned way. It's not like I give you a PowerPoint presentation, explain to you a concept, and then you go do exercises one through 89 odd on that. No, it's the other way around. Like, we're asking you to think about homework things, and then we come in and discuss. That can There's a, many reasons for that. And that can be stressful for people at first, but you got to remember a couple of things I might've said last time. Like, so yes, we're going to start going over the homework today. We will, like, as soon as I get through the chat, we're going to start going over the homeworks. And yes, I know they were due today and thank you for turning them in. And, and like, even if you turned them in a couple of days ago, I didn't mark them yet or anything because technically you had until 3.05 today to do them. Um, what are I going to say? Uh, yes, um, I understand for some of you, it's stressful to do homework before anybody talked at all about it. I get that that is what's going on. It's not a mistake. We're not doing it to be mean, but also you're not alone. Like, it's not like you missed something. If you were trying to do that thing on a spring homework and you're like, wait, what? I don't know how to do that. Like he never explained how to do this. That is true. You're not crazy. We are assuming that you do have some knowledge or memory from physics 101, but and that you have the entire internet that you can use to help refresh yourself. And that we're assuming that you can help one another and that you should, but we are expecting you to try to figure things out and then come to us and then we explain. And remember this very important thing. I forget whose question I'm asking right now, but yes, we're gonna start going over the homework today for sure. Yes, we might not even finish going over it. But the other thing is that with homework, with regular physics, problem set quantitative homework, like the homeworks that are worth like 20 points, 25 points, the next ones were 35 points. With those kind of homeworks, what's due before class time is essentially your first draft. What's due is that you make a really valiant attempt and you try to answer all the questions and you show work in a manner that I'm going to show you today. That's what's due. If you, if some of you have already, I have actually marked some of them and sent them back, very few. If you get anything less than a full score on, the, excuse me, if you get anything less than the maximum available points on a homework, like, like a thing on a spring was worth 20, okay? You're, you're all going to, most of you turned it in. Thank you very much. Um, some of you didn't. We'll get to that in a minute. But some of you are going to get it back over the next week, and you'll get like a 17 out of 20, let's say. And you might even have all the answers right. You might even have all the right answers, and yet you still got a 17 out of 20. Or by the way, conversely, you might have all the answers wrong, 
and you still might have like an 18 or 19 out of 20. The, the points you get are based on the process and the thought and the completion and, and steps and stuff. So the really important thing that I wanna say here that I cannot stress enough is especially if you turn in that first attempt on time, I don't care whether you got a 17, a 13, an eight, that's not a percentage. That is not a percentage. That is not an exam score. What that is, is you have now gotten eight out of the 20 points for the remaining 12 points, you still need to do X, Y, or Z. And you have as much time as you need to do that. For all of you, I can't make this clear enough. What you, what's due when homework is due is the first draft. Then after that, you keep uploading corrections or new drafts as frequently or as off as late as you want to get the rest of the points. You, even though Google Classroom will say it's late, but that doesn't matter, that's Google Classroom. Once you have your first draft in, you are, it is your right and responsibility to get all the rest of the points and you can. You're not gonna be marked for lateness. You're not gonna be marked bad for the fact that it took you more than one try. You're gonna be like loved and rewarded for the fact that you're trying and trying and trying. You, on all the homeworks, your goal is to get all the points and you have all the time in the world to do it, including, including like we're gonna start going over things today. When you start seeing things like, oh, I get how to do that now or, oh, I knew that answer, but I didn't know he wanted us to do it that way, or I didn't understand he was expecting a diagram. Fine, you're gonna learn that today in class. You can totally, you should totally then go back, just do correct whatever, include whatever diagram, make you know the improvements or do the physics that you didn't understand before and you understand now and re-upload a whole new copy and you'll get the remaining points. Even those of you who haven't turned it in yet at all, which shame on you, but no, no, even if you didn't turn it at all yet, still, when you turn it in, you still, and even if you turn it in after today's class, you can still get all the 20 points. The, the one difference is I'll know, and I will acknowledge that in a couple minutes, I know who did originally turn in a draft on time and who didn't. So you'll know that I know that you know that. And you don't want to do that every time. Like you don't want to be in a pattern of always being the person who doesn't turn in things on time, or you don't want to be in a pattern of always being the person who just waits for everything to happen in class and then hands in the homework. But even so, yes, you can use class to improve or fix or do your homework. As long as you're using class the same way you would use Khan Academy or a friend or an uncle or an aunt who's like a Nobel prize winning physicist or Wikipedia, like IE, you can use whatever resource you want, including class, to gain the understanding that you need in order to authentically complete the homework for all the points. What you can't do is just like copy a line out of Wikipedia, that's a, some formula that you found that you don't understand at all, but you just assume that I think it's right, and you just copy it down and call that homework no. And similarly, you can't just like copy down some formula from class and just assume that because I said it, that means it's right and that I understand it. No, you use class or you use Wikipedia or you use Khan Academy or three brown, one blue or whatever, whatever to learn the stuff and figure it out so that then when you write down your homework, you're writing down things you actually understand and then you will get all the points no matter how many drafts it takes and no matter how late it is. For real, I'm saying this every, so yes, soon I'm going to start going over the homework and I'm going to go over it in a way that to show you what it is I'm looking for. Don't take it as chastisement or criticism if you already did it. Take it as this is what to do to get all the remaining points in case, in case when you get it back, you didn't get all the points. And if you did, you know, Quark bless America, of course. All right, so hold on. I'm just oh, recording. Oh yeah, that's also true. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is also recorded. So if I, yeah, I mean, we're not trying to prove anything in this class because it's already proven, like honestly. But yeah, if it ever came to some major dispute, if really, and it never does, but if it really came down to it, it's like you used your voice and you expected five points. And I was like, no, that wasn't your voice. That was a ventriloquist from another room. I'm not giving you the points, which would never happen. But if that happened, right? Like, yeah, we have the YouTube video. We can play it and see, see if it was your voice or not. But it's never going to happen. The, the benefit of the doubt goes to you. The tie goes to the runner. I trust you until I have reason not to, um, honestly. And there's no person in the world that cares that much about the class and that point but, and who would be willing to have that whole argument, who wouldn't just be willing to just say hello with their voice in class. Like, it doesn't make any sense. No one's going to, whatever. But yes, we've got the recordings. Okay, Fahima, good. You just closed the conversation. That's awesome. Thank you. Recording, yeah, I know the recording's a mixed blessing. Anyway, when we do group work in lab, so if some people don't have been.
Oh, well, yeah. No, no, that's totally true. What Norwin is saying, first of all, yeah, if I understand correctly, that's a very, sorry, also I want to change. That's a very optimistic and good, whoa, what's going on here? Sorry, hold on one second. Also just to remember, what Norwin's saying is very true. Like you, what happens in lab, there's ways to use your lab groups and use each other to really benefit your understanding of your grades. And that is what we're trying to encourage for sure. For sure, even though a lot of, yeah, that's like a big part of the point of lab is to learn how to use each other. Cause, cause again, by the way, you know, that's just, I love John Jay and I'm so proud to work there seriously. And I think you guys work so hard and it's such a hard program. And I do mean that whether it's CMB or Tox, which most of you are, or you're in the pharmacology department at another school and taking this course, you all of you are working so hard, not to mention forensic science, but you're probably not in this class if you're in front, blah, blah, blah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, but one thing that makes John Jay even harder, even when it's not COVID, is that almost nobody sleeps there. Like there's no dorms, which means you guys can't collaborate as much as they, people can in Ritzy private colleges. And that really is a bummer. Like that's like you lose something in that, that you can't just like live with each other, do science all the time. That's how a lot of us got through science that way. Nobody gets through science alone. Nobody. Um, so, and then COVID, oh God, makes it even harder. So any ways you guys can collaborate in lab and stuff is really, what, and help each other is what we're trying to do here. But also, so yeah, a good point, Norwin. But also on Norwin's point, let me say, I, I'm a talker, as you can see, I'm a loud, fast talking guy. I, and I want participation. I want us to be a group, but I know it's very hard on Zoom. And it's particularly hard because it ends up being that louder or more like, loud, bigger personalities seem like they're participating more. But part of the reason for a lot of these game portals, and you'll see as I open up more and more, I really am also trying to show that there's more than one way to participate. They don't all involve noise. Like for example, and I recognize that a lot of you are super engaged and you're paying really close attention, but you just don't want to talk a lot. And there could be a thousand totally legitimate reasons for that. Also, you're also often being a lot more polite than people like me who talk a lot and never let anybody get a word in edgewise. Like, like you know, the key to music is listening and the key to conversation is you, you, you need some, I mean, you can't just be talking all the time. So I, I'm very aware of that, I think. So there's a, there aren't as many as there should be, but I try to open up any kind of portal as I can think of that rewards that kind of thing. For example, one portal that will open up, I just haven't yet, is if you take notes, I mean, you all should take notes, but if you take notes while we're doing this and you ever just screenshot me your own notes, just to show I'm taking notes while all this is happening, like even though I, yes, yeah, Everbaum, you're sending me a PDF, but I'm taking my notes. There's a portal for that. I just haven't, I just keep forgetting to open it. Just showing me screenshots of your own class notes is points. There's just one example, like, like, you know, or you can occasionally send me a private chat that just says, I'm totally listening, even though I'm not saying anything. I believe you. Anybody who would bother to do that is doing something. Like, I don't want to just reward talkers. Um, I want to reward people who are engaging. And there is more than one way to engage. So, I mean, hopefully that vaguely responds to what Norwood is saying about the lab. But yeah. And hold on, let me just put, uh, you, can uns you can unsubmit things. Yes. I don't know where that came from, but. But yes, things can be unsubmitted. Oh, I see why she said that. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, although in general, especially with, the, let me say this. Y yes, Google Classroom allows you guys to unsubmit things. Let me, so if you make a mistake or put something in the wrong portal somewhere, sure, go ahead, unsubmit it. But let me say, with the actual problem solving quantitative homework that we're hopefully shortly gonna start going over, please with that, never unsubmit. I mean, you can, and I will or won't know the difference depending, but as advice, don't unsubmit because what we're just submit a new thing that's better because then all I'll see is I'll see your better thing but I'll also see that you're working that hard and that you are willing to revise and undergo drafts don't um, submit something because you think it's wrong it's a really bad habit that habit come and I'm not saying that that doesn't apply to what you I know they're talking about something different with Yulia right now but I'm saying it just reminded me with like a, a thing on a spring like that kind of homework Unless you literally put the wrong thing in the wrong portal, no matter how many mistakes are bad, you think your physics work is don't unsubmit it. 
That is just like self-loathing to do that. That is like erasing your own time and effort that you put into this class and making it go into the void just because you think you're embarrassed that your time and effort might have gone in a wrong direction. Don't do that. That's what separates great scientists from good scientists. What makes great scientists great scientists is that they're willing to not be good. If you understand, like, remember, we're here to learn how to experiment. One of the big fallacies of this science program is it tends to make everybody think, well, most science programs tend to make everybody think that experimentation only happens in a laboratory. That's, and in laboratories, you'll find, you'll see in laboratories and with research grants, everybody accepts that only 1% of what they ever do goes anywhere. Nine, okay, that's an exaggeration, but like 90% of what people do in the labs go nowhere. They get funded to do stuff that goes nowhere. It makes, it's wrong. It's mistakes. Solutions get, like, they have to throw things away. They go down dead ends and they find that things that they thought were going to work don't work, blah, blah, blah. Like 90% of what people do in the lab gets thrown away and then gets funded again. And the reason it gets funded again is because everybody calls it research. Because everybody knows that research, you don't know. It's like looking for gold. You got to look a lot of places to find some gold, right? That's not even a metaphor, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Or like taking photographs in the old days before digital, like you have to take a hundred photographs to get one that's worth framing on the wall, right? That Everybody gets that about experimental laboratory research. What I'm here to tell you is that's the way theoretical research is too. That's the way classroom discussions and classroom homework and all physics thought should be too. You have to think, 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 and write, write down, write down lots of stuff and, and be comfortable with writing down wrong stuff to get to the point where you're writing down right stuff, all of us, all the time. And that part of what we're here to do is get comfortable with committing to mistakes on paper. So please, that's what the whole, all the homework is all about. That's why you will not be punished for lateness. You will not be punished for extra drafts. You'll not be punished for getting it wrong the first time. You'll get rewarded because you want to get used to getting things wrong the first time and yet, and not get discouraged and keep going. So please don't, un, so just, just don't like erase things or unsubmit, like it, you consider it research and consider it evidence of how hard you're trying in the class, really. Um, and if you want me to read something else instead, tell me. But like, anyway, I'm going to back on the stop. Um, okay. Oh, yes. And if you have this emergency, step out. Sure. No problem. Okay. okay. But yes, with, with homework, hopefully I've answered this at this point. But to Christina's question, I'm trying to say as loud as I can. And I'm, I'm, I'm loud not because I'm angry, but just to emphasize. With homework, you can resubmit as many times as you want. I mean, you can submit new drafts. Absolutely, you should. You keep submitting until you get all the full points. That's what I'm telling everybody, okay? Like, keep submit. And I don't, so let me be even more clear about that. But I mean it. it. Like, all the homework is like practice for exams. And exams are practice for real life research, whatever. I really mean this so strongly. This is why we have a complicated homework policy, because that's really real action of the class is. What I really mean is say you do like, okay, I'm going to, well, yeah, a lot of you like did home, most of you submitted homework. Let's talk about homework two, thing on a spring, because that was like real physics, you know, like it might've been hard for some of you. We have to talk about it. It connects to the class material. It has numbers, you know, it's real. Homework two, a lot of you did it, submitted on time. Google Classroom says you're on time. Cool. So you're totally like, you're good, I'm good. And you didn't get it back yet because it was due at 3.05 today. So, okay. So then I'm going to mark it, even if, anyway, I'm going to mark it this week and then you'll get it back next week. Now, again, a lot of you will not get full 20 points out of that. Certainly not the first time because it's the first time we've done homework together. You'll get like 17 or 16 or 12 or eight or whatever. I'm telling you right now, just fix the stuff that just find out why you didn't get the other 12 points and absolutely resubmit it for the remaining 12 points. The only catch is, to be clear, let's say, let's say you did all the, say it was five pages that you submitted to me and all the first four pages were perfect, exactly what I'm looking for. But the last page, page five, is like missing a bunch of stuff or something. So I'm asking you to redo or complete page five for the remaining points. Just one thing is please like redo page five, but then submit the whole document again. Always you're trying to give me a complete independent, independently readable piece of physics work. 
Like every time you upload, upload the whole thing. So I can look at the whole thing and see, oh yeah, she's got part one, she's got part two, she's got part three, she's got, oh, she's got the whole thing. Here's the whole thing, it's perfect. 20 points, boom, right? Like all the history is there. I can go back and check it, all the drafts, they show how hard you're working. But by the time you give me something that you think is final and complete, and you want all the points for it, give me something that's final and complete. So that just means we, you know, that just means if you had to fix page five, like reattach it to the other perfect four pages and just resubmit. I'm not saying redo the other four pages, but always give a complete thing. Hopefully that's clear. Um, I'm gonna pull. Right, so yes. So thank you, Norman. That's a portal I should put in. Like when one of you answers a question for another, I totally need to put in a portal for that. That's super helpful. It also shows me I'm making sense. So what Norwin said is right. Yes, to increase your grade, you can resubmit. Also, again, if for whatever reason you did not submit the homework yet that was due today, well, then I know that you didn't. And like, you know, okay, like, and you know that I know it, but it doesn't matter. Still submit the homework, even after today, even after we go over a lot of it, submit it and you'll still get all the points. It's about getting it done eventually and getting it done no matter how many tries it takes. And it's about being willing to be wrong the first time. So yes, you can and should keep, just don't unsubmit, just keep resubmitting, just keep additionally uploading. And you, Google Classroom will allow you to do that even after you've gotten a grade or at least I have that setting on, I promise. Even after you get a grade, you can still upload a new document and I automatically get notified. I'll know that you did and I'll increase your grade, like for real. Um, okay. Okay, now us meet it. Okay, I would have, okay, wait. Midterm, fair question, I'm not gonna get to today because we have two. Midterm, I can tell you right now, the structure is that it's take home. It is take home, it is untimed. And it's, what's the other word? It's on time and it's open universe. That much I can tell you, but don't, and you get a practice exam for like, you'll know what's on it before you even get it. I don't want to say much more about the midterm today just cause like I'm already falling behind and it's not for a while, but I can tell you that much about the midterm that when you, when it's time for the midterm, it will be take home. Like you'll have like a week. It'll be basically what the midterm is. Everybody is like a big, big homework assignment. The more you do the homework, you're just practicing for how to take the midterm. The midterm is like homework, except that it counts a lot more. And by the time you get to the midterm, then I am grading for correct answers as well as everything else. And then like cheating is a much more serious thing. We'll talk, but the midterm nonetheless is take home, open universe, untimed. It's just like a big old assignment that you're gonna submit to Google Classroom. I mean, you're you're going to see in Google Classroom and submit. So that's all I want to say about that right now, but that's it with the midterm. With Now, wait, but Asmita's question is a very good one. And let me just see how much, oh my God, there's still a lot in the chat. Okay, hang on one second. All right, so I'm going to keep going through the chat, but I, oh, and Quan's raising hand. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, so let me get to Quan just because I appreciate that Quan is raising hand, but also be, even before Quan, let me do one thing just to pause. Hold on. Again, the point of today is to go over the homeworks. We're not gonna finish, but we are gonna start. We're gonna do enough to give you an idea of what I'm looking for in the homework, enough to help you so that you might already wanna go back and correct things you did in your homework, totally fine, no problem. Don't, uh, don't un-upload what you already uploaded, just upload the new thing. And, and I'm gonna look at the new thing first. If, if I get to your homework and I see there's two things, and one's more recent, I'm gonna assume the more recent one's better and I'm gonna look at that first. I'm just gonna see that the other is a drag. You know, I'm not looking to grade extra work, but Okay, but wait, hang on for one. We're gonna to get to that today, but let me just, just to be clear, hang on one second. And also to remind me that we should, we are gonna go on soon to start talking about the homework, but all right. So like, right, okay. With unthingy things, okay, I'm gonna take a risk here. I, it, it, with unthingy things, some of you have not turned it in yet. Okay, to be honest, seven of you have not turned it in. I don't know who your names are. I'm not worried about that right now. No matter what I say in class today, still turn it in. You will still get an opportunity for the full amount of points. The full amount, you're not gonna be penalized for lateness. And you're not gonna be penalized if you use any knowledge from class in order to do that homework. You will not. You Seven of you who have not done it yet, and I don't know who you are. I just know there's seven of you. This is, I'm not shaming anybody. I'm just like, life happens. I'm just saying, if you haven't done the homework yet, you still totally can and should to get all the points and you can still get all the points. 
at the same time, oh, six of you. Whoa, funny. Okay, six of you. But what I want to say is at the same time, there's a fine line that I walk, but I mean it. I'm not here to worry about any moment that anybody did something not perfect, or I'm not here to worry about any person that's not perfect. I'm not here to worry about anybody who's not here right now, whether for legitimate reasons or not. That's their business. They're an adult. You're an adult. But I can stop here for a minute and just say for a moment, I'm just going to say, like, in case you're wondering, like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, I killed myself to do the homework for today. And you're telling me there's six people in the room that never even did it yet, but they're still going to get all the points. Why did I kill myself to get my homework in for today? If they And they're going to even be able to use what he talks about in class today and do it. And they're going to get all the points. What kind of nonsense is that? If you're thinking that, which I understand, then the best thing I can say right now to you is, well, hang on a second. I want to just publicly thank, I just want to publicly recognize for one moment and thank Marlon, Shasha, Charles, Janelle, Fahima, Azmita, Alex, Kazi, Kareem, Al Medina, uh, Diana, Norwin, Adriana, Ivana, Elena, Quan, Hannah, Grisella, and Yulia. All due respect to you people, I totally know you totally handed in your homework on time. It is totally understood. You are not getting an extra, you know, $100,000 for that, but karmically, it is understood that you killed yourself to get the thing in on time. Acknowledged, I see you, I appreciate it. Okay, and now you're gonna give the benefit of the doubt to any of your colleagues who for whatever reason couldn't do that, they're gonna get the points, you're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. One day you might need that benefit of the doubt, but it's totally understood that the very first homework assignment you guys totally did on time, thank you. Also, again, if you think you did it totally wrong or if you find out during this class, you can upload a new thing and I'll understand that that's what happened. That first you did it, but then you did it better. It's all understood. It's all about good and better and best. It's not about bad and worst and worst. Similarly, I'm gonna quickly say on the other homework, the one I really need to talk to, the one that, and that one, by the way, unthingy things for all of you, hopefully that was like more fun-ish. Like that shouldn't have been stressful. It might've been stressful if you thought there were exact right answers that I was looking for. I was not. It's the meant to inspire a discussion, which we're gonna have. There ultimately are some answers that are better than others, but that was not meant to be stressful. It's meant to start directing our minds. The other one was a little bit more stressful perhaps. So let's look at that for a set. And that's the one that ultimately we have to talk about more. Of course, we're not gonna finish it today because it is involved. But the other one, just so we're all clear, the other one that was technically due today, which seven, which a couple of you have gotten back already graded. And if you got it back graded, I don't care what the number is. If you got it back graded already and you're like, what? I only got 14 out of 20. Oh my God. I'm like totally failing this class. No, 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 no. If you already got it back and it's already graded, then we both know that you're way ahead of the game and you're going to very quickly see how to get those other six points or whatever it is. You do not need to worry. If you've already gotten it back and graded, you have nothing to worry about. Just pay attention in class. But also 17, so that's two of you, 17 of you totally, Marlon, Shasha, Charles, Janelle, Fahima, Kazi, Kareem, Almedina, Diana, Norwin, Adriana or Adriana. I'm sorry, you'll tell me. Adriana or Adriana, uh, Ivana, Elena, Quan, Hannah, Grisella, and Yulia. I totally see that you totally turned it in, totally on time. I totally appreciate that. It is noted. Your innermost quarks and your utmost heavens are noting that, and I appreciate it. And that's where, and I will grade them and we'll move on. Okay. I hope that's, and I'm not doing this to publicly shame people. Like, honestly, I do, if you didn't turn one of these in, I don't know who you are. I mean, like, I don't know that fact. I just explicitly know that those people did. That's all I'm saying. Now, um, I had to get before, I want to start going over this, but there was a really important question in the chat. I know logistically about next week. Yes, let me just see how the chat, I, I do have to talk. Yeah, Asmita's question. Right, okay. So the answer to Asmita's question, Asmita in the chat, since homework number three, so it says, since homework number three is due in two weeks, correct. And we might not finish, we might, I mean, we will finish lecture today, but right, we might not finish, Right, we might not finish going over everything today, correct? Will I be uploading a lecture video and sending it to us next week? Yes, and then she's reminding, we don't have class next week. Now, let me, this is where we get into that whole thing from last week. You notice today's totally normal, right? I mean, I don't know if you call this normal, but today we're meeting, we have been meeting from 3.05 uh, uh, oh, I just had a brain freeze, from 3.05 to 4.30, 4.30, Sorry, uh, to five. Oh my God. I'm, now I am. Five. We finish at 545. Thank you. That's awesome. And that's a portal right there. Thank you. And, and by the way, I believe that was Yulia who just used her voice. Am I correct? 
Yes, you are. Okay. So that proves that point. No, yeah, okay. So that was Yulia. So yay, Yulia. And yeah, okay. And of course, I've already forgotten what she said. But yeah, 545. Right. Um, so today is like fully long. Now, now Asmid is right. Next week is one of those weird weeks where things are a little bit weird. I will put a notification of this in Google to remind you. Um, but I am saying now, yeah, uh, yeah, I will. In fact, I'll try to do it even before this class is over. But next week, it's not that we don't have class next week. Let me remind you. It's not that we don't have class. It's that it's just half as long. Like next week, you still come to class, everybody. You just don't come at three... Right, you don't come at 3, 4, 305, you come at 430. So, but yes, to Asmita's question, I will upload a video, a 75 minute, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, Asmita, do you wanna, sorry. Do you wanna oh yeah, I was just saying because the, the college is closed. Oh, closed. Oh, oh my God, I'm so, <laughs> That's why I was like, do we still have class? Cause oh my God, I'm so sorry. Wait, I'm glad we're discussing this. You're so right, I'm so crazy. Oh my God, right. Okay, pause, take a breath. Okay, okay, wait. All right, ha, oh my God, you're totally right, I'm totally crazy. Um, okay, we don't have class next week, right. In fact, can you, rem oh my God. And it's been, you know what's really ironic about this, of course, it's because of the Jewish holidays and I don't know if anybody's guessed, but I should know about the Jewish holidays, to put it mildly. Oh my God. Okay. Um, 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 could someone remind me? So I do have to revise what I'm saying. Asmita's totally right. Uh, in fact, I can tell you right now, probably what's going to happen is I'm, I'm probably going to change homework three to be due in three weeks, probably. But just remind me, wait, so we... Is it one of these like when someone's coming also? Sorry. Is it one of these like Wednesdays, Sunday, and Tuesdays, Friday, Carvel kind of like can someone actually put in the chat or just remind me exactly how school goes next week? Because I did forget that. Um, um, and I will adjust our schedule. Okay, thank you. Three to eight closed. Three to eight closed, meaning September 3rd. Meaning that the September 3rd through the 8th were told. <laughs> From this Friday up until next week, Wednesday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, right. I should know. I totally forgot. All right, thank you. Okay. So I do have to make some adjustments. So, okay. That means, and, and, and one last thing, when Thursday, when we reopen on Thursday, is Thursday a Thursday or do they make it into Monday or something like that? Uh, yes, Thursday is Thursday. Uh, okay. Thursday. Okay. Thank you, Hannah. That's Hannah, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And say, just sorry, and same Friday is Friday, right? I mean, same. Okay. Okay. So huh, I'm very glad you told me. All right, so first, the short answer is that everything I keep saying about next week, what I really mean is two weeks from now. Or so that homework assignment that I said is due in two weeks, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change it right now. It's due in three weeks. And and then, but then yes, I will post a video, just I guess I now have an extra week to post it. I will post a 75 minute video, and that will be sort of that's like homework. You have to watch it. That will, and I'll tell you when you have to watch it by and stuff. And it will help with that homework. And it will be instead of the first half of our class in two weeks from now when we get back to, and I will put this on Google Classroom to be clear, but right. So next week we have nothing. Then the week after that, we will start class at 4.30 instead of 3.05. And there will be a video posted to take care of those first 75 minutes. And it will help more with this homework that will then be due the following week. That's absolutely right. I'm gonna take a moment to adjust the Google Classroom to that, but if anybody wants to put in the chat whether that is now clear or whether it's not clear, I mean, particularly like Asmita or other people that were helping me with this, if you wanna tell me whether you think that's clear or not, that would be helpful, but I'm gonna pause for a second to fix it in Google Classroom because you're absolutely right, that's a mess. Um, And I should know, and I shame on me. I mean, <laughs> all right.
Okay. Oh, let me look in there. All right. What hopefully just happened, and again, we're going to start talking to you, but you know, all these things, it, they're boring but relevant. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back and look in the chat in a second. Then we're going to start going over these homeworks. But what I'm also going to look, I'm going to go back to wherever I was in the chat in a moment. But I would love it if it, what I did just do is in the Google Classroom, I adjusted the assignment so it's no longer due the 15th. It's now due the 22nd, I believe. Check. And I also just put a note in the stream. It's just a note. So it's just in the stream. So I, it doesn't like really stay anywhere. But but please, someone check like in the stream. I tried to clarify exactly what we just said. So you have record of it that the next time we meet after today will the next time we meet will be on the 15th, but it'll be at 4.30 rather than 3.05. And sometime prior to that, like there'll be no other new homework, right? There won't be new homework. This homework that's next is due after that. But sometime prior to that, the one new assignment that will arise is that I will post a video, 75 minutes that you will watch instead of those 75 minutes that we would have had together from 3.05. So what I want someone to do in the chat in the next five minutes is just confirm, oh, Great, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I love it. It's like, okay. doesn't this feel almost like communication? It's almost okay. And you, okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. And great. And thank you, Asmita, for bringing this up. And thank you, the rest of you, for clearing this up. I like, I knew she had a question I had to answer anyway, but I had totally forgotten about my people's holidays. Um, and we didn't invent those holidays just for alternate side of the street parking. I promise you that. Um, okay, okay. It's up there and it's clear. Great, great, great. Okay. So now I'm going back in the chat. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, all right, so I'm going. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so that was Asmita's question. Christina's question I sort of answered, like not really, but sorry. Oh, and then, okay, okay, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, my apologies, Noreen, I got it now. Okay, Kwan. Oh, I, and again, I don't wanna to talk too much about exams today because there's just like so much I don't wanna, but you, you, your final exam is, it is and it's not cumulative. The truth of the matter is on the final exam, what we directly test you on, kind, it is cumulative. Like this whole class is a story. This whole class is a proof. We, I'll tell you right now, there's an objective to this class. The ultimate objective to this class is we want to teach you enough in a sequence. We want to teach you a certain set of ideas um, in a sequence such that, and this is where all the motions come in. I mean, Joe will talk more and more about this, but the point of every lab exercise, the point of every new motion, so to speak, every new statement that we learn, every new equation, it's a progression of ideas that are ultimately trying to go from the simple to through the increasingly complex to get you to start with things that we all think are obvious and that we all can, maybe not obvious, but that we can all accept as truth and to build from that all the way to a final conclusion of we want you to see by the end of this class why, why physicists, why the New York Times, why, why it is that people say the universe is expanding, which is a very weird idea, by the way. But you hear it all, but maybe you do think it's a weird idea, maybe you don't, maybe you've never thought about it before, maybe you have, but ultimately, you know, you hear about in the New York Times all the time and physicists, and you hear, or, or in real science journals, you hear all the time about, just matter of factly, the, the expanding universe. And you've heard about the Big Bang, which is supposed to be the beginning of this expanding universe. Now, that means that people think the universe is constantly growing. Now, that, that's a weird idea, just a sidebar. Like, that's a weird idea because the universe is supposed to be everything. The universe is supposed to consist of not just all the stuff that is in space and time, but all the space and time that constitutes everything of the world. That's what we mean by universe is the sum total of all the space and time uh, that exists and all of the stuff in, in it, right? But we apparently believe that the sum total of space and time is expanding all the time. We think that the amount of space and time in the universe is growing all the time. Now, just, I mean, I didn't mean to get into this today in a way, but in a way I did. Stop and think about that for just a minute, if you never have. Like, that is a weird idea. 
Okay, I know we just all refer to it all the time, matter of factly, in the New York Times. That we're oh, the expanding universe. Oh, we've been ever since the Big Bang when the universe was a point, uh, we've been getting bigger and bigger. Every and everybody just acts like, oh yeah, we now just like everybody acts like, oh yeah, the Earth goes around the sun. We learned this in third grade, but like, whoa, that is a weird idea that we're saying that the sum total of all of space and time is growing all the time. Like what, like, let me remind you, normally when we say something expands, and, and by the way, I sound off topic right now. What I'm really doing actually is giving you a big hint as to your final exam because somebody asked. And it's actually good to know where a movie is trying to go before you sit down to watch the whole movie. So let me tell you, yeah, yeah, the final exam is cumulative because in the final exam, you have to, you have to show that you've been here in the whole class and followed the whole class, but what the whole class, and you do have to have understood what was going on at the beginning and see how it connects to the middle in order to, to be able to do stuff at the end. Now, most people do do very well in this final exam. I'm not trying to intimidate anybody. If you pay attention and you stay with me and you bear with me through my weirdness and Joe's weirdness, you won't find the final exam hard, but, but, but the final exam is an attempt for you to show that you have seen how we have tried to show you why there's any possible reason to under to believe that space is expanding all the time. And now I want you to think for a second why this is a worthwhile endeavor, besides the fact that the class is required and you just like have to for, for your, 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 you know, your molecular bio major or cell in the which is like weird. Um, the reason that this is a worthwhile endeavor is normally when you say something expands, when anybody says something is like, 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 can you see this? I don't know if you can see this can. Like if we say, oh, the aluminum got hotter, so it expanded. It has a, a coefficient of thermal expansion and it grew. Like, what do we, like, whatever. What do we mean when we say this expanded? We mean it took up more space than it was occupying before, right? Or, or better, if we say that the liquid inside expanded, we mean that there's this can, there's this container, there's a certain amount of space in the container. And if we say the liquid expanded, we mean that the liquid now occupies more of that space than it did before. And there's less empty blank space left over. That's what we normally mean when we say something expanded. But when we say the universe expands, we mean the amount of space grew. What? What? Like, what does that mean? Grew into what? Expanded into what? If there was room for the universe to expand, like if the universe was only taking up this much, but then it was taking up this much of the outer container, then what the hell? What is that outer container? Why didn't that count as part of the universe? And the answer is it did. The universe does mean everything. So when we say it expands, we mean something very strange. Like, forget about whether you do believe it or don't believe it, you should just stop be like, like, forget about whether we can prove it to you or not. How about just like, why would anybody even think that in the first place? How could they even put those words together without their head falling off? Physicists believe that the universe, i.e. the sum total of space and time is growing. There's a reason for that. The reason for that is built from every single thing we're gonna do in this class. It doesn't mean that if you can understand that, you can understand all of physics or anything. It's just one example of a physics thread that you see how physics works. If we can get you from just like looking at springs going back and forth in the lab, which is where we begin or and in the homework, if we can get you to see how a simple study of a simple mechanical macroscopic object like a spring can lead us to a conclusion, which leads us to a conclusion, which leads us to a conclusion, which ultimately leads us to believe in an expanding universe, then hopefully you've gotten a big glimpse at a big cross section of what physics thinking is really about. So the final, so this course is ultimately about why does the universe expand or why do we believe the universe expands. And by the way, that doesn't mean I'm going to convince you by the end. By the end, you might actually be like, oh, now I've seen it and I don't believe it at all. Good. You're still way smarter if you get to that point. You totally don't have to believe that the universe expands again, but at least you'll know why people think that and what the reasons are. And at least you'll be now properly engaged with the New York Times whenever the New York Times mentions it. Unlike most people who are just like, I'd rather you take this class, get to the end, take the final exam and spend your entire final exam showing me that you think it's garbage to think like and rip apart the arguments good you'll probably still get an a you'll almost definitely get an a if you show me by the end i actively why given all the stuff we're doing in this class you reject the notion of an expanding universe i'd say you're a lot better off and a lot more in my heart and a lot more of a physicist than the people who just accept that the universe is expanding because people say that it is and then like move on with their lives i don't understand those people 
And those people are not doing physics if they just accept that. And that, that's accepting blind authority. That's not being a scientist. Anyway, so the final exam is cumulative, sorry. Um, and that is the point. All these motions that we're doing, I promise you they're trying. So if you also want to know how to pay attention to class, that's where this is all going. And you'll see if I ever get to anything today, you know, the second assignment looks like a normal physics assignment, a thing on a spring. But the first homework assignment, which we'll go over first, has to do with thingy things versus unthingy things. We have to start building a distinction between the two type of things that exist in space and time. Because really, that is really what this course is about. Oh, like physics 101 was about thingy things, was about like, like um, um, baseballs or pool balls and cars and uh, springs and, and rods and macroscopic classical, ele even electrons. It was about certain concrete objects that occupy space and time. And we were studying how they move through space and time. Physics is always about studying how things move through space and time. But when you get to physics two, when you get to where we are now, when you get to higher and higher levels of physics, we're still always studying how things move through space and time. But the entities that we're studying start getting more and more abstract. They start seeming less and less thingy. We start studying things like electromagnetic radiation or, or sound even, or light, like, th like, and so in order to get to an expanding universe, we have to start looking at some of the things that occupy the universe that are not just simple, like, like a baseball. So that's where the first homework assignment is about. You'll see, we'll get to it if I ever get through the chat. All right, I'm going back. Okay, but good question, Quan. Totally legitimate question. Totally legitimate question. Um, Shasha. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Shasha's question. Oh, absolutely. It's one of the reasons I haven't turned them back yet. Like a lot of you already turned in your homework even before today, but no, I do take time and I mark them and I will tell you what you need to do to get the more points. Also, that's what I'm going to do today. Even if my handwriting is illegible, you'll, I'm going to give you the codes and stuff today. Like if I mark, if I write WIQ and take off one point, I'm going to tell you today exactly what that means and what you have to do. So yes, of course, I, I shouldn't say of course, but yes, yes. To Shasha's question. Okay, Kazi's. Got it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, that counted as, ooh, that was a thank you. That was a closing conversation and a voice. You see what she did? That's a double, that's a triple dip right there. And I'm serious. She can literally put that in game turn two. She can put it in closing a conversation and she can put in voice. The same thing. She can just write out, remember I used my voice to say thank you after you answered my question about the homework. She can literally write that out and triple dip that into three portals and get like 14 points. I'm not kidding. It's like that. That's yeah. Okay. My friend. Um, oh. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no problem. No problem. Oh, you're Quan. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, that you just got points for that's avatar. You could put that in the avatar portal, but sorry. Yes. Quan, go. Um, so I just have to clarify one thing that you said, um, did you said that we can submit our homework, even though we get our grade? Yes. If you get anything less than a perfect grade, if you get anything less, I think on this one, it's worth 20, I think. If you get anything less than a 20 at all, you can then just fix whatever I said to fix and re-upload the whole thing. So if I said there's just this little thing wrong here, fix that, but re-upload the whole thing. So now the whole thing is perfect and you'll get the rest of the points. Yes. Okay, thank you. No problem. Oh, what Kazi said. It's so nice. Oh, I remember. Qua oh, your friends. With oh, well, I, oh, that's great. I think I wrote a recommendation. No, great. Well, thank you. Uh, that's very nice of you. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll stay that way. We'll see. I mean, sometimes I have bad days, of course, but okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now, now, okay. There's a question in the private chat. I'm not going to say the person's name because it's in the private chat. I'm not going to like literally read it because it's in the private chat, but it's a legitimate question just to, and this is part of what I'm, if someone is saying in the private chat, basically like they looked at the homework and they were like completely lost or they said, or, and maybe even that means they were completely freaked out. They didn't say that, but um, so they're going to like wait to see what I say before they submit. Okay. So I'm saying two things about this. One, I'm saying that's fine. I'm saying to everybody, I get it. You're not going to be docked for with, with the regular mathematical problem set homework, like thing on a spring, that stuff. Even if you waited till after class to submit, you're not gonna be docked any points. You're not gonna be penalized for lateness. If you honestly legitimately use class, if class helps you under, and if by the way, if it takes me two classes to go over three and you wait two or three classes, you're not gonna be punished or penalized for that fact. 
You're not, you can still get all the points. But let me say this carefully to everybody because this is unusual and it is a little bit delicate. You could wait until I do all the classes on that thing and then you can submit and you will get all the points. But, but a couple of things about that. Number one, when you finally submit, don't just then take my notes like where I've solved it and just literally blatantly copy what I did and submit that for the points. I will know the difference. Don't do that. And I don't think that's not what the person's saying. But I, the person in the private chat, but I want to make that clear to everybody. I'm not saying wait for me to go over the homework and then just turn back to me exactly what I did and call that your homework. I mean, obviously plagiarizing me and calling it your homework is a really dumb thing to do because if there's any source I know well and don't have to check to see if you play, it's me. So don't just give, and I mean that. Don't just give me back me and call it your homework. That's really dangerous and really, really transparent. And I know when people are doing that, believe. Um, what you want to do is use the benefit of class to understand. Once you understand, then, like, even if you're, like, looking through all of my notes in order to do your homework, once you've looked at them, then make sure, then put them to the side and do the homework. Like, yes, your homework's going to look a lot like mine. You're going to think, well, I mean, he showed us, so it's going to be the same work. Like, so how it's going to look a lot like mine, but it's going to look a lot more different than you realize. And you're going to see that today when I go over this, even me doing answers to my own questions, it looks very different from everybody's looks different. Everybody has a different personality. So you can watch all my classes to understand it better, but then you show, in other words, to everybody, there's a lot of things in this class that a lot of things that I'm going to ask you to do that you would have considered cheating in another class. And I'm going to tell you to do them anyway. Like you're going to take an exam where you're going to be able to go on Wikipedia while you take that exam. And you're going to be able to talk to your friends while you take that exam. And some of you are going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe he's letting us do this. Like this, like Professor Sheehan would or whatever would never let us do, or this is like totally cheating. I can't believe I'm getting away with this. It's such a joke. Some of you are going to think that, but I'm telling you right now, it's not a joke. And, the, and it doesn't automatically mean you're going to get an A just because you could do But also, I'm going to say, at the same time, there are things I really do consider cheating that you a lot of you are used to doing and not thinking of as cheating. And one of them is writing down things that you don't understand. If you get something from somewhere else, whether it's Wikipedia or Khan Academy or Chegg, God forbid, if you get knowledge and understanding from another place, I don't need you to quote that because I didn't make up this understanding. Of course, understanding gets transferred and shared around from different people. I don't need you to quote or be ashamed if you used Khan Academy to figure something out that is not clear to you because I'm not making it clear enough for thousands of reasons. Like if you know something is due here and you're not understanding my stuff and you go to Khan Academy and get it from them, God bless both of you, Quark bless, Khan and Quark bless you. That's great. And you don't have to quote it. It's like physics knowledge. You don't have to, but... Don't write it down until you understand it. Once you understand it, then write it down. And when, when you're writing it down, if you actually understand it, as long as you're not looking, you're going to write it down your way. And I'm going to see that you understand it. And one example of all that, you're going to see in a minute, if I ever get to the homework, it's so embarrassing. You're going to see that something I'm big on that you don't have to do in other classes, that I will take off points if you don't. Is every time I ask you a question on a homework or an exam, I expect you to first tell me what the question is before you answer it. Before you start showing work, before you get an answer, you're going to see, and I'm going to write that. If I ever write WIQ on your homework, if you ever see WIQ and I minus a point, what that stands for is what is the question? It is your job to put the question down first in your own words or your own way before you start answering it. Like, because like, you're doing these things on a separate sheet of paper. You, can't, you must assume that I'm not looking at the homework sheet when I'm looking at yours. So you're going to make the question clear in your own way. Say on a thing on a spring, for example, like the very first question, and I will get to, but the very first question on a thing of the spring, I mean, it has a whole diagram. It has a bunch of facts, which I expect you to give me in your way before you start doing the work. And then the first question says um, something like when at the moment the mass is released from 15 centimeters, what is um, uh, the initial force exerted by the spring? Something like that, right? So you're going to jot down something like question one at t equals zero, f equals question mark. Like you're not gonna copy and paste my whole question. And I'm right now, even though I'm not writing down, I'm telling you, this is how to do homework. Like I'm, this is unofficially me starting to go over the homework now. 
This is where I am strict and where you might not have predicted it, but this is what I'm saying. When you do homework two thing on a spring, whether you've done it already or not, I'm gonna expect that you drew your own diagram that's very much like mine, but will still look like you, not me. You're gonna have the facts next to that diagram. And then you're gonna say in question one, and again, if you didn't do this last time, well, you didn't know. And that's why you're gonna get another chance to do it. But I am telling you, you write the diagram, you write the facts, and then you'll say like question one, you won't write all my words out and you won't copy and paste it because that doesn't show anything. That's just copy and paste. You're gonna jot down the minimal amount of information that you can to get across to the reader what the question is. So you'll literally just write something like at t equals zero, f equals question mark or something. Then you'll start showing your work and then you'll get a final answer like f equals negative 30 newtons, which is the answer. And you'll box that and that and you'll call it a day. And the point of all that is that way I could take your homework and show it to anybody who knows physics. I could show it to Walters, Wu, whatever, anybody who knows physics. And even if they didn't know what the homework was, They'll be able to look at it and be like, oh, I see this physics situation. I see the physics situation. I see the facts. Oh, I see what the sort of research item question was. Oh, and here's the work. Oh, and yes, I agree with that physics report on that. Like you're doing physics that way. You're not like, just doing teacher student homework. If you provide all the information and you show the question and you work it through, you get an answer, then that is an independent physics proof. Like that could be a journal article, except that it's been done so many times. It's probably not interesting enough to publish, but it is an independent piece of physics work that you've just shown. And the, that's what you do on the homework, all of you. So if you wanna wait three classes to see how I do it in order for you to do it, you can do that as long as you do that. Just know, to, know that if you keep waiting and you keep waiting for me to go over the homework before you turn in, you're gonna fall behind very fast. Like you're gonna wait three or four classes before you even try. And then the next homework's gonna come and you're gonna be falling behind while the other people really are trying and they're moving faster just because they're trying even before I talk. So the converse of this is those of you who are hearing me saying like, wait, a person can wait three weeks and then turn in the homework and then still get the credit. Yeah, they can technically, because we're all good people here. Okay. But you're not threatened by that because first of all, they're not going to take whoever you are. If you did the homework on time, first of all, they're not taking away your A's because there isn't a limited number of A that I'm going to give. You can both get an A. So you're not in competition. So let them do their thing and you do your thing. Second of all, if you actually are trying and doing the homework and handing it in on time before it's due, believe me, you're going to have a much less stressful experience than they are. And you're going to get a lot more because you're trying and you're going to need me to talk talk less and you're going to get more out of class. And to both of you, what I'm also here to teach you and Walters is here to teach you is you're going to find as you go along that this idea of I have no idea what to do, I better wait. That's what we actually want to knock down in you uh, from you. I don't want to shame you. But this idea of I don't get it at all, like I just better wait for a certain that's what we want to tease out of you because that's ultimately not the road to successful research science. What you want to learn in this class is what to do when you don't know what to do. That's what we're ultimately trying to teach with all these homeworks and everything is we want to get you to, to the point where when you see, we know, we know, I know that when people sit down to see a physics assignment in very often, you're lucky if what you do, often what you experience when you sit down and look at a physics assignment, frankly, even if people have explained everything in advance, often people sit down and look at it and go, oh my God, I don't even know what this question means. Like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Like, I don't even know what he wants. Like, what is this? I have no idea. I had that reaction countless times in college and in graduate school. And I chose to be a physics major. And there were tons of physics assignments that I would take out and look at and go, I don't even have a freaking idea what this thing is asking. Are you kidding me? Right? I respect that. I sympathize with that. I know you can feel that way. But our job here is to try to work our way out of that feeling. Our job is to ultimately learn what to do in those situations, to learn that when we go, I have no idea. We don't really mean that. What we really mean when we say, I have no idea, when we look, and it happens to all of us, it particularly happens to smart, successful people who are used to being smart and successful, right? Like you guys wouldn't be in this class if you already hadn't passed a million hard science requirements that got you to this point. You're in a hard science major. You're used to doing hard things and being successful and you're used to doing a lot of work. But the converse of that is it also means you're used to getting work and being like, all right, there's going to be a ton, but I can do it all. Okay. Oh, I know what to do here. Okay. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do this thing. Okay. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do well because I did before. What you're not used to is getting things where you don't even know what to do. Right. And that since you're used to being successful and used to knowing that you're smart, which you are, the first moment you ever feel dumb, which is what physics does to all of us, 
you feel dumber than dumb people. You feel dumber than dirt, or at least I do. The minute, because I was used to being a good student too. And the minute I would get something that I didn't know what the heck was going on, I immediately thought, oh my God, this must be a nightmare because I don't even know what's going on. Like I thought I was smart I, and I usually pay attention and I usually do my homework. So I don't even know what's going on. This is e a disaster. Either I suddenly became completely idiotic overnight or this professor is totally unfair or I totally missed something like, oh my God, was there like a lecture that I missed? Like that's what smart people go into crisis mode the minute they don't know what's going on because they're used to knowing what's going on. Dumb people are dumb all the time. They get very smart at being dumb. Smart people are not smart at being dumb. Well, we got to learn. The way to get smarter is to learn to get comfortable with being a little dumb sometimes and to feeling for a moment like, I don't know what to do. But there are things to do when you don't know what to do. And the first thing to do, and I'm saying this to everybody, the first thing to do when you look at a question and you think you have no idea what to do is to put the question in your own words. It helps a lot. It helps a lot. It, it may, shows you right away that you do have a idea. You always have a idea. When people say, I have no idea, what they really mean is, I have a number of ideas in my brain right now, but I think they're all wrong. And I don't want to write anything wrong, God forbid, because I'm used to being successful and good. I don't want him to see me be dumb. I don't want to see the professor to see me be wrong on paper. So when people say, I have no idea, what they really mean is there are a lot of ideas in their mind, but they're not comfortable fully to commit to any of them. We got to get rid of that. Physics is experimentation on paper, in our bedroom, in our own office, in the lab. Experimentation. The minute you have any idea, you want to write it down on paper. And the first idea you should have, all of you, I'm talking to all of you, when you do the homework, especially when it starts getting hard or harder, I mean, it's already hard for some, the first thing you do is try to just put the question down in your own words, see what the question is trying to get at. And then if in doing that, you're like, I can't even do that because I don't even understand these words, which words look them up. You know, and I'm not trying to yell at anybody. I'm sick. There's a whole sheet I put in the tools. We'll go over, but there's a sheet called knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. That's really what the class, I mean, the class is partly about the expanding universe, but it's also about expanding your mind. It's actually about getting smarter and it's about how to get smarter being already a smart person, which you all are. Okay. The first way to get smarter as a smart person is to start getting more comfortable with being dumb again. Because that's going to happen if you pick the right job or you pick the right graduate school, right? You know, if every single time you go to the gym, you had a fun, easy time, you're not going to the gym enough, you know, that, or whatever the metaphor, right? Or every time you play soccer, you win, you ain't playing with the right people, right? Same thing here. You're all going to hit walls or otherwise you're not picking your path, right? We're here to help you figure out what to do when you hit the wall. And the answer is not do nothing. I mean, right now it's okay. Like, so if you didn't do the homework, you didn't do the homework and wait, but there are things you can do. And especially if you know you're not being graded on the, the final answer, you're being graded on process. The first step of the process is translate the question into your own words. The next step of the process is write down definitions that are relevant to that question. There's lots of steps you can do without ever actually knowing what the heck you're doing. And they eventually turn into knowing what you're doing. Okay, I've said enough. Okay, so that was all about a private chat question. And I'm not trying to shame that. I think it was a very, I respect the question. I, I, people feel it all the time. That's why I'm addressing it. And I'm not addressing it by name or anything. It's a totally legitimate question, but and a lot of us have it. But that's my answer for the moment. Um, yeah, I will leave comments on the sections that we need to redo to get full credit on homework. Yes, answer to you those questions. Yes, Alex, thank you for coming. Well, cool, cool, cool. You are not doomed. You are here. As long as you do stuff in this class, you're not doomed. A lot of people get an A in this class. A lot, you do, some, just enough people get Fs and Ds that the rest of the people can have As. There aren't usually a lot of Cs. There's usually As and Ds. And as long as you stay with us and keep the faith and trust us and just keep doing everything we're saying, you're not doomed in this class. You can get every single answer on every homework wrong. As long as you've got answers, you're not doomed in this class. It's part of the point, LOL. Okay, cool. I can remind you, thank you. Three day closed. Okay, we did that. Cool, we'll be back on Thursday. So, uh -huh. I mean, by the way, these holidays that you're everybody, everybody's missing school for, they're about, at least the second one of them is about forgiveness, so come on. Um, okay, uh, yes, still Thursday class. It's clear, cool, cool, thank you. It's clear, it's clear, that makes sense. Cool, it's up and clear, cool, thank you, got it. Volume increase, mass stays the same. Okay, sure, but uh, we, 
in terms of the expanding universe, you mean? Well, the truth is the mass doesn't stay the same. It increases. I mean, that would make sense, but it's not actually what people are saying. But even so, if the volume of the universe increased, I mean, increased into what? Right? Like, how could it increase? We're not just saying there's more stuff in the space when we say that the universe expands. We're saying there's more space. Like, how does it? And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying, like, that's crazy enough that it's worth thinking about. And that's what we're trying to prove in this class. But I don't want to dwell on it now. But yeah, volume increases mass stays the same is a good starting thought, certainly. And Anna, totally, thank you for participating. That totally counts as something I should open up another portal for the way you're doing that. Okay. All right. I'm going to start going over the homework now. But these are great. You guys are great. Let me just look. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a breath for a second. And all y'all, we're going to shift gears. We're going to start going over the homework. So if anybody does want to run and use the bathroom or get a drink, please do. I have to take a breath for a second anyway. Um, I have to see what's what. No, I've lost one because all the videos have disappeared. All right, but that's cool. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, um, all right. All right, I don't know if everybody's still, but people took a break or not, but okay, I'm gonna start again right now. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say right now is, homework one was meant, is meant to inspire like a sort of larger discussion and a larger in-depth kind of set of investigations, but I've been talking so much this period, I think I really need to get to homework two and like start showing you how to concretely solve problems. And I need to start showing you some of the concrete knowledge that we like actually need to go on to homework three and to go on to the exam and stuff. So I wanna, I really wanna make sure to get to homework two today. I'm looking at the time again, right. And we have till five, four, five, right. So I'm gonna do something a little unusual. I'm gonna blast through homework one very quickly now. Like I'm gonna give you some basic answers to it right now. I am, I'm not gonna skip homework one. But I'm going to ask you, to, I'm going to beg your forgiveness. And I'm going to sort of like not have a big discussion about it right now. It is meant to be more discussion oriented, but I'm going to tell you. So, so as far as points and stuff like that, like as long as you actually answer the questions and show that you knew what was going on, you're probably going to get full credit for that. Don't worry. 
if I'm about to give you answers that are different from what you put or something, that's probably not gonna matter in terms of points. And all my strictness about points and stuff really applies more to homeworks like homework two. That's what I wanna show you. So you, you probably very few of you are gonna have to redo or re-upload homework one, no matter what you wrote on it, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly give you the answers kind of that are in my mind about homework one and show you the point that I'm driving at with homework one. And I'm gonna beg your forgiveness that I'm not really gonna have a big discussion about it. Um, and just again, remember that even if you put down different answers from this, you probably still can and will get full credit. Don't worry too much about that. And I'm probably gonna grade it very fast also, to be honest, like don't over worry about points on homework one. If you did it or when you do it and you just answered everything, you'll get probably all the points. So my goal is to get to homework two before this class period runs out. So I'm just gonna quickly now jot down some things about homework one just so we're not, so it's not lost, okay? So that's what it says here. So tell me if you want me to go back, but. Oh, but I will need your help. Okay, here's how you're going to help me. I'm going to try to be sort of fast, but just remind me, since I'm not looking at the sheet, because I don't look at two sheets at once, remind me in the chat if I say one of the tasks wrong, or like if I remember the tasks wrong, please remind me in the chat what the actual task is. But well, all right. So in homework number one, and again, even if you didn't do it, you can still do it and please do. But the whole idea in homework number one is like you had two things in front of you that you designated like thing one and thing two. So it might be like this can, if you can see it's thing one and the stylus is like thing two, to like whatever two random objects, right? And then you sort of focused your attention on some representative point located inside each one of these, like probably a point in the center, but but maybe not depending. So like, like but you try to re-identify the whole object as, 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 as a point of mass only locating a point of space at some point of time, so to speak. So like this pen, when I think of this pen from here on, if someone, you can't really see it. If someone refers to this, if this is thing one and you refer to thing one, and I'm thinking about if someone asks me to do something with thing one, then I'm really thinking about like the point at the a dot at the center of thing one, right? And then similarly with this can, except it gets a little bit odd because this can, like if there's liquid in it, there's, oh, yeah, okay. And you don't have to, fair enough, Asmita. And I don't mean for anybody to overthink this. It's not even that big of a deal. What I'm really just trying, look, it's not, a, it's not an issue at all if I have two totally solid objects, like these two things, like a calculator and a pen. Then I would say from now on, whenever I'm thinking about the calculator, I'm thinking about a point at the center of the calculator. And whenever I'm thinking about the pen, or I mean the stylus, I'm thinking about a point at the center all my extra language. And that's so that we can start thinking. And uh, we want to start thinking, if we didn't already in Physics 101, we want to think of space and time as like a big coordinate grid. We want to think about like, like three axes of space and an axis of time and think about marking and measuring from point to point in the big sort of coordinate grid uh, that we use to measure motion through space and time. So we like to reduce everything to points and pixels when we're thinking about stuff. That's the purpose of that. Where it gets a little dicey, you'll see in a minute, is, is, is if your object happens to be like a container, like this can, like and say it's an empty container, then, you know, then it's a little bit strange because what's inside the container is like nothingness. That's not really part of the metal of the container. So if I picked some point in the center inside, then that's not really a point that has any metal in it at all. So that's a little confusing. So I was just at, it could or could not end up making an issue. So I'm just trying to sort of say, pick a point in your object that actually is part of your object. Like if I want to think about this can, I don't want to think about the whole can. I just want to think about one point that represents it, but I'll pick a point on the surface of the can just because there is metal on the surface of the can and there's no metal anywhere else. Minor, minor technicality. If you're still confused about it, don't overthink it. It's not that big of a deal. In general, I'm just saying when you pick your two objects, kind of think of them as very small or just think a very small section of each of the objects. 
so that so and again if, and also if it still doesn't really make sense i think it will in a, in a minute when i when i start oh lol i didn't even see lol oh, so she's not oh so she's like not that stressed about it okay okay um um um, um so task one i believe was um i believe task one was take one uh, maybe someone to tell me in the chat i think it's take thing one and have it occupy two points in space at the at one point in time is it could someone actually tell me what is task number one take thing one and thing two in two different points in space at the same point in time oh sorry right oh i totally got the backwards yes yes oh i'm glad i asked yes okay thank you yulia and that that was yulia right i think right okay yeah. Okay. All right. See how it works. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. So, task one was. Right. Okay. I believe. So I believe this is what Yulia just said. And I believe it's what the task is. Right. And I'm, and again, you notice how I'm re. So I guess this is a model of how to do the homework. I'm taking the the, the question and I'm. Oh, did I say it wrong way? It's right. Oh, it's right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank you, Shasha. That was Shasha. Right. Okay. Thank you. And yes. Okay. And thank you, Yulia. Again, I saw that also. So, but notice now I'm like rephrasing it in kind of my own words here on the sheet. If I were doing homework now, I'm giving, I'm spitting the question back. I'm not answering the question. I'm literally just giving the question back, but I'm giving it just enough in my own words or my own construction. Number one, so that the reader can now follow. I mean, when they now start to see me answering it, they know what it is that I'm trying to answer so they can follow and they don't have to look at anything else in order to follow. But also, also, I'm showing the person who wrote this assignment, I'm i.e. Averbaum, I'm showing that I get what the question is, right? In the attempt to rephrase the question in my own words, I'm actually communicating. I'm showing that we are looking at the same question, which is very important. Also, if I found the question confusing or hard in an attempt to do this is actually gonna help me on the road toward answering the question. It's an extremely important skill that really seems like a joke to people whenever they don't think it's necessary, but it's exactly the thing that's necessary when it's necessary is give me back the question in your own words. So anyway, here's the question is, is it possible to have two points of thing, two thing points at two space points at one time point? That is the question. Is it possible? Right. And I'm going to, rather than having a whole discussion about it, since we're starting to run short on time, I'm going to say right now, I do feel it's possible. I think I can demonstrate it and I'll, without too much difficulty. Here's my demonstration. Right. I've got thing one is over here at this point in space. Thing two is over here at this other distinct point in space. And they are both at those points in space at one and the same point in time. Right. I mean, it's not meant to be hard. It's just meant we're just asking, is it possible or impossible? And it seems to me that right now I am demonstrating that two points of mass can occupy two points of space at one point in time. You might not even think it's a surprise, but I'm saying it perhaps to contrast with other things that will be a surprise or perhaps to just organize my knowledge of the universe. It seems to me, and I am saying it, I believe it is possible. Okay. You might, I'll look at your homework. You might have been confused by the question. You might have said something else. You're not going to get points taken off just because you said something else. But I am telling you now, I, if you now sort of follow the question as I'm asking it, I feel that that is possible. Two things can be at two points in space at one point in time. And this is, and I'm obsessing about points, right? You can sort of see why I'm thinking about points. Like, so that when we ask some other, you know, I'm saying like the center of this thing could be over here while the center of this thing is over there. It's not a contradiction, it's not impossible. So I think to cut it short, I think this is possible, okay? And again, 
It's not a trick question. A lot of times when people can get an answer in physics and they can get it somewhat easily, then they assume it's a trick because they figure if it's easy or if it's obvious, what's the point? No, 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 no. The point of physics is to infer surprises from things that are obvious. We always start off with things that are obvious. We want everything to be seem reasonably true when we begin. What's just not obvious is why it's important. Believe me, this will be important. So don't think that just because it was easy that you must be misinterpreting the question or there must be a trick. No, I think that one's possible. That's task one. Then task two. Task, sorry, that was possible. Task two then, I believe, was two points of thing, two thing points at two time points at one space point, right? Now you could write this different. That's not exactly the English that was in the question, but I believe that is what the question was. It's actually, it seems very similar to the first question, but it suddenly seems sort of more awkward, right? I better go on to the next page in a second, right? And you might put in a different order. You might say, this one's asking two thing points at one space point at two time points. Whatever it is, it seems somehow very related to the first question, but more awkward, right? It is a different question. It is a different question. I'm gonna go on to the next page, but I'm gonna say right now, I feel that this one, is also possible. It is also possible. It's not, but it's possible in a different way. To show that this one is possible, I think I would have to do something like this. Um, all right, all right. You see what I'm doing? Like the camera's bad, but like I'll do it again. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, Alyssa. Yes, I'm sorry. Or Alyssa? No, quite. Point. No, go for it. No. Yes. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Oh, okay, okay. That's all right. No, no, no. I didn't mean to. Okay, cool. Um, so wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on the next page, wait. I'm just recopying stuff. Okay, this one, it's a different question. Same words, different order, something different question. You might think it's a very awkward question. It is a different question. It ultimately has the same answer possible, but for a completely different reason. It involves a different activity. This one is going like this. I have an object at a point in space and at a different point in time, I have a different object at that same point in space, right? Not hard, but it's a totally different thing. Just to sh show you space and time are related, but they're different somehow, right? But I think this one's possible as well. You just have to do something different to do it, right? That's task two. Stop me if I'm doing the wrong tasks or if I'm saying something weird. Again, even if you put different answers, you can still get full credit, but I think these are the ultimately the answers I'm thinking about. Then, okay, then task three. Oh, sorry. Now this one is, yeah. Right? I believe that's what task three is now. Now this one, to cut to the chase, and I know we could have a whole, this goes to four, so looking at the clock, okay. I know we could have a whole discussion about this, but to cut to the chase, I feel, and again, using our intuition, like if we're gonna use the same type of interpretation of what these questions means all throughout, if we're not gonna suddenly like change, in other words, I'm just trying to be normal here at my desk with two objects. I'm not necessarily thinking about some weird quantum physics Winnie the Pooh book that I read in some other seminar. Like I'm just thinking about normal objects in a normal macroscopic physical way. I'm not assuming huge amounts of outside knowledge or narcotics or something. If I'm making the same interpretations of this homework as I did for the first two tasks, then I think with this third task, I'm gonna say right now, I think it's impossible. This one's now asking to have two points of thing, two things at one point in space, at one point in time. I wanna say, I don't think that's like, like, and this is where the points come in, okay? Like uh, who's, I don't remember, I think it was, when I'm still not saying her name. I'm still not saying her name. I'm not gonna say it until I can get it right. But someone put in the chat before like, that this was confusing the business about the points and everything. This is what I'm getting at. Like, sure, I could have, I, oops, 
I could have like two objects like near each other in the same, same uh, you know, more or less region of space at the same region of time. I could obviously have two objects in the same room at the same time. Like, yeah, I understand both these objects are occupying the same general space at the same, oops, someone's here, sorry, hold on. Like, I get that, but if I'm trying to be, and similarly, like, yeah, I could have like one end of, I could have this thing, like one end of it is over here while the other end of it is over there. But I don't think this thing is like teleporting. It's just a big object. And this is just a big space. Really, this is a lot of small spaces and this is a lot of small objects. So if we just get sort of more clear and more precise and more limiting and think about points in space and time, I don't think there's any point of this mass or this thing there's no one point of this that could literally share a point of space at a point in time with any point of mass of this calculator, right? Like wherever mass of this calculator is, it's gonna shove the mass of this pen out the way or vice versa. They are, they can be near each other. They could be super near each other as they are now, but you can't have a point of this thing occupying a point in space at, the same point in time as that point of space is occupied by a point of this thing, right? Like at some, at the basic level that I can do this and it's like easy and I don't need quantum physics or something to do it, or I don't need like, you know, electron orbital or some craziness. I can do this and I can do this. Yeah, I know you can't see, I can do this and then this without much difficulty. And I can do this without much difficulty, but I can't with that same level of ease, have both these objects at one space point at one time point. That I'm gonna say is at least if we're following the same rules of understanding the sum, I say that one's impossible and that's important. It's almost why I asked the first two to set up a contrast. You can have, so far what I'm saying is if we're gonna think about things and space and time in the, in the manner of a physicist, if we just, we, nobody knows exactly what space is. Nobody knows exactly what time is. And nobody even knows exactly what matter is. But there's some basic understandings that we want to share. And one of them is that whatever time and space and matter are, two things can be at two points in time at the same point in space. And two things can be in two points in space at the same point of time. Not the same idea, but both ideas are possible yet Whatever space, time, and matter are, two points of stuff cannot be at one point in space, at one point in time. That I'm going to say, I hope, hopefully you agree, is at least for the context of physics or studying the universe, that one, or if you don't like impossible, if you want to believe that anything is possible, if you dream it, then I'm just saying it's a lot less possible than the other two. It'll take a lot more contrivance than the other two. That's the, okay? I'm not trying to, and hopefully you're, you're in the, if, even whatever you put down in your homework, if you, hopefully you at least see that way of thinking. If you get how I, like what I could mean by that, then we're still together in the same yellow submarine, okay? So far we're saying, whatever we mean by space, time, and matter so far is, is that the first two are basically not possible, uh, basically are possible, and this one is basically not possible. It's a different request from the other two, okay? And I'm spending longer on this than I planned, but oh, there we are. That's task three. So, but certainly if you did put these answers, then you're definitely on the same page as me. That's task three. Then task four. Sorry, task four. Now we switched. This was a mistake. Now we're just going to look at one of the objects just to, for kicks and giggles. We're going to look at one object. And the question was, can one thing point occupy um, two time points at one space point. Or you could put it the other way if you don't like, like this is an awkward question too. You may never have thought about this before. Or honestly, when you see this task at first, you may well read it back. Your brain might have you read it backwards on purpose because it seems like it should be something else, but it isn't. It's literally asking, can you have one thing be at two different times at the same space? Or put another way, can you have one thing be at the same space at two different times? Now, again, you might never have asked yourself that before. 
It might seem really confusing, but it's partly confusing only because it's totally possible. It's totally doable. It's not confusing because it's impossible. It's confusing because you might just not ever bother to care or you don't think it's worth saying that it's possible. But I'm gonna say right now, this one is, to, and I'll show you, or you could show me, but this one is possible, right? In other words, I can, and in fact, there's two different ways I can show that. This one, I can go like this and then go, and then put it there again, that's it, right? One point of thing, of stuff, was at a point in space. And then later at a different point of time, it was back at that point in space. Totally possible. A thing can occupy the same point in space at two different points in time. Or you might have noticed, you might be thinking right now, or you might've thought at home. An even easier way I could do it is to just go like this. Right? This thing is here now. And it's also here now. And this now compared to the earlier now is actually a later, if you know what I'm saying, right? Like if you sit in your desk for a full hour, then you were at your desk at the beginning and you were at your desk at the end. So you were at the same point in space at two different points in time. Maybe totally obvious, but totally possible, right? I think, right. Stop me if I'm not right or whatever, stay in the chat, but if not, I'm gonna move. Why would I even bring that up? Well, largely, to make a point of contrast or to, to show us something. Because if I now look finally at the very last task, task five, which is looks like the same question just sort of flipped around, but it just shows you how powerful these words are. It really matters what order you ask them in. This one, right, is different. This one says, can one thing point, one point of thing, be at two space points at one time point? And that I say, no, no, right? Like, like yes, I understand this pen is like a long pen. It's over here, part of it's over here and part of it's over there. But that's not what we're, that's why we're sort of trying to focus on points of time and points of space and points of stuff. What is the center of this pen cannot be at two different places at the same time. It can be at two different times at the same space, which again shows you something is very similar about space and time, and yet something is different. A pen, the center of this could be here now and here later, but the center of this pen cannot be there and here now, right? It's different. It's a different question. Something can be at two points in time at the same point in space, but something cannot be at two points in space at the same point in time. Again, you probably always knew that. You, you just didn't necessarily think that it would be at all important or worthy to put it in contrast to the other thing. But I'm saying, just to be clear, or as clear as I can be, I'm saying this, whoa, I'm saying I just lost the world. Oh my God, I just lost my, excuse me, the internet is, so we, you might lose my face in a second too. The internet just did something, at least my board, pardon me for a second. Oh, it's running on batteries. Hold on, hold on. We might lose my board completely. Oh, great. Like, like having one of you wasn't good enough. Now I have to have two of you in one second. All right, but we'll come back and we'll plug this in. Hopefully, this won't happen again. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, that one is impossible. I'm saying now, 
There's a reason for this. Hopefully, none of these things felt hard or weird. It's just maybe weird to think about them at all. Hopefully, physics will sort of always feel this way. We're trying to point out things that make sense, but you, we're trying to point out things that are obviously true. No. But we're trying to point out things in physics that are obviously true, but are not obviously important. That's the, we're trying to select of the many, like lots of things in life are obviously true. It's like obviously true that I have glasses, but we're not going to build a whole theory of knowledge over that. Like I do have glasses, it's true, but it's not that fruitful. It's not that productive of an observation. But other things in life are equally obvious, yet that if you sit and think about them, they open up all of these further observations and inferences in math and stuff. And that's what physics is really about. So trust me, if, if all you're thinking right now is, okay, I get I get that this is the case. I just don't get where this is going or why. Well, then good, you're in the right place. Um, what I'm going to say so far to summarize. Okay, but, and again, I do have to move this along, but uh, I'm not doing something like that actually. Um, so far, all we're saying is if you take two everyday normal objects, like a pen and a, and a, and a, and a uh, can of Coke or whatever off your head, by the way, well, so yeah, I'm trying to stay next to this plugged in thing is why I'm, but anyway, um, what we're saying so far is if you take every two everyday normal objects, um, and you try to perform these different sort of combinations or permutations of space and time occupation, with those two objects, like certain versions of occupation of space and time are possible, and certain combinations of the occupation of space and time are not possible. Like, okay, so what? What does that do for us? Well, the re here's what it does, or like why we care. Here's the so what. First, so here's where I'm going with this or why we would care. First of all, let me just tell you or technically remind you, since you took physics 101, all of physics is about stuff moving through space and time. That is the entire domain of physics. And that is physics entire domain. Like physics is about the study of stuff, of things occupying and moving through space and time. In fact, moving through space and time, occupying, same idea, because moving just means changing or, Occupying means having coordinates, B, 
being describable by space-time coordinates, and moving means changing your coordinates. Physics is about stuff in space and time. That's all that it's about. At any given moment, no matter how hard any problem that we're solving is in physics, all we're ultimately asking is, where is something going to be when? Or where was something when? Or when was something where? Or when will something be where? That's all of what physics is, honestly, if you really think about it. Whether you're predicting the trajectory of a cannonball that you're firing to the other side of a war, or you're predicting the orbit of a planet or an electron, or you're a modern contemporary, a 20th century, like forensic science student or cell and molecular biology student or whatever, who's trying to solve a crime and figure out what happened in the past. If you're using physics, all you're ever trying to do is figure out where things are when, whether it's past, present, or future. Okay, that is physics, is stuff occupying through space and time. I mean, occupying space and time. But what makes it physics? The principles and the practice that we use in physics, the way we do science, is we're only concerned with stuff that occupies space and time in a measurable and thereby analyzable and thereby predictable way, right? Like there's stuff perhaps, like, so, we, so like, there's a lot of things that exist in the universe and maybe even exist in certain places or certain times, but not others. Like, like maybe I, I like love and justice or hatred and injustice. Like, I'm very concerned with these things. They exist in the universe. They might even be more important in the universe than any velocity or any electron that I ever look at as a physicist. Like, honestly, like love, certainly I might be more concerned with it on a moment to moment level, maybe. And maybe it occupies a greater, grander place in the universe than electrons or velocity does. But love, even if I ever say, you know, I really felt like I loved my sister last year. And this year, I don't really love my sister so much. Or the reverse. Or like, last year, I didn't love my sister so much. Now I do. Even if I say that love sort of occupies time, I don't think love occupies space and time in a manner that I can measure, analyze, and predict, right? If I could, then it'd be part of physics. But it is not part of physics, not because it doesn't exist or I don't care about it, but because I can't measure, analyze, and predict its occupation of space and time. So... Physics is just concerned with things. So physics is not directly, at least not today, not yet, used to analyze love or justice or, or anything else. It's there to analyze like that. It's okay. Physics is there to analyze stuff that occupies space and time in a measurable, analyzable, predictable manner. Okay. However. Okay, so just to be clear, and again, I know I'm watching the clock. I know we have a half hour left. Just to be clear, there are some things that are super important and exist, and but they're too abstract. They're not too abstract to exist. They're not too abstract to be important, but they're too abstract to be part of physics. Such things might be love or justice or whatever. Like they're totally real. I'm not saying they're not real. I'm just saying physicists at, as yet don't have the capacity to study them because it, they exist in the universe, but they don't necessarily occupy space and time in a quantifiable, analyzable, predictable manner. Therefore, they fall in the world, but they fall outside of physics, right? Okay, and I, again, I know you know that, but 
So anything that does, anything that is concrete, anything that exists, excuse me, anything that occupies space and time in a measurable and analyzable and predictable manner is part of physics. Um, and, and some of those things that occupy space and time in a measurable, analyzable, predictable manner, even some of those things are very abstract, but yet still part of physics. And those things are actually ultimately the things that we're here to study in this class. Let me back up and be more clear. What I'm saying is, What I want to say is this stupid demonstration of like a pen and a seltzer can saying, oh, what they can't do is both be in the same place at the same time. And what each of them can't do is be in two places at the same time. Those obvious restrictions, so to speak, are restrictions on a very particular kind of thing. Those restrictions restrict the kinds of things that I was holding in my hand. They, they characterize a kind of thing, a, 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 not the only kind of thing in the world. There are other kinds of things in the world that are not restricted by these two tasks. There are other kinds of things in the world that are not restricted by these two tasks, yet still do occupy space and time in a measurable, predictable, analyzable way and are still part of physics, i.e. what I'm really specifically trying to say right now is, when we said that a can and a pen cannot share a space, which is true, I'm not trying to trick you, but when we say like the center of the pen and the center of the can cannot be in the same place at the same time, or when we say the center of the pen cannot be in two places at the same time, what we're really observing there, we're not making an observation about space and time so much as making an observation of a very particular kind of thing, a thingy thing, like any kind of thing that you could pick up with your hand from your desk and do these demonstrations with is a particular kind of thing. It's a very, very, very concrete, tangible, uh, palpable, accessible, macroscopic, mechanical kind of thing. It's not all things are restricted that way. The kind of thing kind of entity 
that cannot be in two places at the same time or cannot be in the same place at the same time as another like kind of entity, that kind of entity is a very particular kind of entity. It's not the only kind of entity in the world. It's a very particular kind of entity. And it's so particular that it's called a particle. Whoop. Yeah. What it, and that means any kind of object that you could just pick up with your hand or any, anything that seems very thingy thing, every, anything that seems palpable, concrete, massive, accessible, macroscopic, typical, normal, um, um, tangible in this way, is ultimately called a particle in physics. Particle does not actually have to mean very, very small, like a planet is a particle in physics. What it means to be a particle, it means to be particular. It means to be a discrete, distinguishable. Well, yeah, a part, maybe please write this down. To be a particle in physics means to be particular, to be specific, to be, be, and please write this down in your own way. No, I'm not writing it down. Please write it down. In fact, if you were to take a screenshot of notes of you writing these words down that I'm saying right now, even though I'm not writing them down, I definitely will give you points that I'm going to open up a portal for that kind of thing. I promise you might do me wrong. But I'm saying, write down that a particle is, is something particular, something distinguishable, something distinct, something bounded, something separable from other things. That's what a particle is. It could be very big like a planet or it could be very small like an electron. But to be a particle means to be something that is either here or there at a given moment, but not both. It means something, it means to be something that if it is here, nothing else, or at least no other particle could also be here at the same time. The, what, it, as long as you saw like, of course, two things can't be in the same place at the same time, or of course, something can't be in two places at once. Of course, of course, but of course, things of a certain kind cannot do that. Things that are particular cannot do that. As a, and those, well, I guess I am going to sort of right now, but you still get points if you do this, but. I'm making a big deal of focusing on what's sort of obvious to distinguish it from what is a little bit less obvious and, and that which we are actually here together to study for the rest of the semester in the next 20 minutes and so forth. That is particles, these distinct, bounded, tangible, identifiable, discrete occupants of space and time are what you were studying in physics 101 in principle or physics 203 or whatever you took before this class. Like, Physics is always about the study of motion. It's always about study uh, stuff, things going through space and time in a measurable, predictable, analyzable way. And in the first level of physics, or in the first 150 years of the development of classical physics, Galilean physics, Newtonian physics, classical mechanics, we call it, physics tracked the motions of particles, of these discrete, tangible entities. That's what a first course in physics is about. The weird surprise, at least to me it was a surprise, is that there's a whole bunch of stuff like that exists in the world that does exist in physics. Like, like there's a whole bunch of things that do occupy space and time in a measurable, analyzable, predictable way, but yet 
not in a way that is constrained by rule number three and rule number five or task number three. Number five. That's what the surprise was to me. In other words, we're here to do physics. We're already, you've already studied how particles move in time and space, but we're ultimately here in physics 102 to learn how certain things move through time and space in a measurable, predictable, analyzable way that yet aren't restricted by rule number three and rule. Number. There are such things. Now, I don't mean love and justice. We're not here to study love and justice. They don't even occupy space and time in a measurable way, but there are things that do that yet. To, so in other words, We're here to study, and I know I'm running out, I'm watching the, I know it's 5.30. We're here to study stuff that does exist in space and time, that is scientific, not magic, not love, not stuff that does occupy space and time in a measurable, analyzable, predictable way, but yet somehow can perform task three and task five, somehow can violate the restrictions that three and five seem to impose, can violate what seem, some people call the Pauli exclusion principle, um, or something like that. And believe it or not, there are such entities. You know what they are. You just might not know that you know what they are. Um, we're here to, in other words, to study non-particles, ultimately. Okay, I know we're not gonna have very much time to go over things this thing, it's okay, that's why I'm gonna post the video anyway, but the purpose of this sheet is ultimately to get you to see that anything that cannot occupy two spaces at once or cannot share a space with another thing is, is not the only kind of thing in life. It's called a particle. Physics 101 was concerned with particles. What we're here concerned with is the kind of stuff that does, that is really real, that really does exist in physics, but yet, can be in two places at once or can share a space with another such thing. What are such things? Or actually, well, okay, it's worth, I'll pause for a second. If anybody has any kind of example in their mind, if they think they're following what I'm saying, if you can, if you, do, I'm not gonna put anyone in a spot, but if you have a moment, if you want to, put in the chat or say any kind of example of a motion of something that you're familiar with where somehow it involves something that could be in two places at once or 
could be in the same place at the same time as something else. Do you know what I'm, can you think of what I'm saying? In other words, abstractions, kinds of objects that are really abstract, they're not concrete, they're not tangible, yet they seem to be part of science. Like they're, like they really seem to be trackable. Do you know what I'm, right. Okay, good. Well, you're definitely following me. Those examples, those answers you put, you definitely get points of those. I have to figure out a portal. Definitely show that you understand the question. That's awesome. Now, air, by the, I like these, these answers because what you're picking are things that are just abstract enough to be abstract and weird, but just sort of real enough that you know that they really are a part of science. Perfect examples. Air is a very good thought, but by the way, but ultimately air actually is, it seems very abstract, but the truth of the matter is even air is made of particles. And the evidence for that, the fact that, I mean, right now you're talking, the thing in the direct message, yes. And definitely one, oh, okay, cool. Okay, so just say it everybody, but no, it's a good answer. And by the way, I am, I definitely have a portal open that I didn't get, I, you definitely get points for wrong, not even that that was wrong, but like, I want, anyway, air is a good answer, but it's ultimately, Close, very close. All right, I'm going to cut to the chase because I know we're running out of time. Let me just say about air, like the fact is air, well, maybe a little more specific than that. But the thing about air is the reason I know air is made of particles is not because I have a big, strong microscope and you don't or something. But the fact is, is like if I have a balloon full of air and then I blow into it, like the fact that the balloon expands, or the fact that the air that's already there seems to get out of the way when I put more air in right? Or that the skin of the balloon moves out of the way when the air comes in seems to show that it, even though air particles must be very, very small, they must be particles because there really can't be two of them at once. When you put too many in, they start spreading out and moving other things out of the way. It's hard to see, but apparently even air doesn't want to share space with other air. It is a gas, so it can take up any space and it's, it has much more um, of a free-floating sense of what its volume is, but apparently even in other words, that's why solid, solids seem the most thingy thing. But the reason that solid and liquids definitely are not this, right? Because you, you, know, you put something in a liquid and, and as you know, the liquid gets out of the way, the liquid displaces and the entire water line rises if you put something, right? Because it gets out of the way. You know, and that's true of gases as well, even though it's hard to see. In other words, gases, liquids, and solids are all called the three phases or the three states of matter because they actually all are material, even though gas seems very abstract. Apparently, we view it as material particles that behave, that are very, very loose. They're not bonded, you know, in the same way that liquids are bonded or gas or solids are bonded, but apparently they are particular in that even an air molecule cannot be in two places at once. And it, and I'm dwelling on this, not because I'm trying to like make fun of someone's answer. I think it's a great answer, but just to show you how deep this distinction goes. Air is a gas. Gases are particles, as you would study them in chemistry, certainly. Gases, liquids, and solids are all particular, ultimately. But the kind of things that we're going to study, in the, and even atoms, are particles. They're made up of many, many smaller particles, but they are particles. The thing that we're going to study in this class, and some of you are saying it in the private chat, in the public chat, and I'm starting to rush now just because I'm running out of time, but what we're talking about in this class wouldn't be things like electrons. Electrons are particles, but electrical current. Or put another way, not so much air molecules, but sound itself. Or more specifically, as somebody put in there, sound waves. Like a wave is not a particle. It's fundamentally, a wave is a motion that's real. It's totally real. Or sound waves are totally real and totally measured. Like I'm speaking, you're hearing me. Sound is going from me to you. And as you'll find out in this class, or you already know, like it's going, sound travels a certain distance in a certain amount of time. Like it has a speed, 340 meters per second. And it is trackable through the universe. Like I speak and then later you hear. And if you're 720 meters away, it'll take you two seconds to hear. If the thunder is blah, 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 blah. Sound travels in a measurable, analyzable, predictable way, according to the equations, the principles, the practices, the experimental data physics. But sound, but so, so to be specific, sound is a big example of what I'm talking about here. Well, let me write, okay. Even if we don't get to the other shit, I'm gonna write that. In other words, what I'm talking about are,
here? At light, yes, I see light, light definitely. And frequency is a word that we used to describe these kind of things, yes. I'm just gonna put, okay, he, so these examples that I just put, and again, even if we don't get to quite to homework two today, I apologize, I meant to, but I, that's what I'm gonna post a video about, okay? And remember, you don't have anything more to do for like three weeks, so I'm gonna post the video first. So, but, but, um, 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 these things that I just wrote down, sound, heat, electrical current, magnetic fields, light, I put, they're all perfect examples of what I'm getting at here. And they really are. I'm gonna take the next seven minutes to show you how they really, this is not a BS thing. And this is not just like an interpretation. This is like a very real thing. I put parentheses or brackets around the heat because heat is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, but we don't really study it in this class, just to be fair, it's clear. Heat is an example of this idea, but we don't really study it in this class. But sound, we study in great detail. Electrical current, we study in great detail. Magnetic fields and ultimately light, which is ultimately sort of like the punchline. It's how we know the universe is expanding. Um, also gravity would be an example, but these abstractions, and let's look at sound specifically. These are examples of things that move. These are motions through space and time that are very, very real. Their sound is real, as real as it gets. But it's also quantif. I mean, it's abstract, but it's real. And it's real in a quantifiable way. We can observe, measure, analyze, and then predict where sounds are gonna be when, the same exact way, and in fact, with the same methods, that we would predict where a baseball or an atom or, or, or a planet is gonna be at a certain time. But it's very different because sound, like, okay, now I'm gonna, and again, I'm just, because we only have seven minutes, I'm gonna do this right, we're gonna finish this right, and then we'll start homework two in the lecture that I post. And again, I'll understand that I haven't said anything about it yet, it's understood. But just so we can finish this right, well, I'm going to ask you a weird thing to do right now. We've got seven minutes, right? I'm going to ask you, I'm talking right now. I'm going to ask one of you to literally start talking at the same time I'm talking. Now. Like interrupt me, like be rude. Anyone or many of you just start talking right now while I'm talking, like make noise, like be rude, please for a minute. As a demonstration, I'm going to show you, but like one, I'm going to keep talking. I want one of you at least to start talking while I'm talking, do whatever you want, or sing a song, just make a sound, at least one of you right now, also show me that you're paying attention. Could talking, somebody talking, talking. Oh, that was very good. Okay, that was talking. Perfect, perfect, okay. Yeah, I'll talk <laughs> okay, oh, now more of you are doing, great, great. Now that might've felt awkward, and maybe it was so much fun, we should've done it for longer, but oh, and Alex did, okay. Like Alex, Asmita, um, 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 I forgot who originally, someone who did it first I, I just totally forgot who did it first but um so but i saw it and then i spaced out but oh almadina or yeah i think yeah no. it was great. okay now here it might have been awkward it might have been a weird request but i want everybody to think about this again we've got six minutes just to think about this this is such this blows my mind every time i think about it and it's true i'm not bsing you just think about this like i was speaking and almadina was speaking or, or whatever, I was speaking and Alex was speaking or Asmita was speaking. And there was at least one moment where any of you who was paying attention for at least one moment, you heard me and you heard Al, Al Medina at the same time, right? Or you heard me and you heard Asmita say, you might not have understood what I was saying. Yes, okay, cool. Now you might not have understood me or her. You might you might have even thought it was like, like, like an attack on your ADHD or whatever, it certainly was on mine. Right, and you might not have been able to make sense of it, but the reason you might have cringed for a second is because it was like distracting and annoying because you manifestly heard two things at one time, right? What does that mean? That means, and I understand the internet was involved in all that, but I don't care. Like, that's just an intermediary thing. Like, sound went from my mouth and then like went into the microphone, my computer, and then funny things happened with the interwebs and the computer, yada, yada, yada. But eventually sound came out of the speaker of your computer and went into your ear, right? I mean, if you heard me, that means you believe that sound, whatever that is, went into your eardrum at some point from me. But at that same point in time, there was sound, a different sound from Asmita hitting your eardrum at the same time, right? Like they were occupying this, both those sounds which are real things, like they're real, right? They're part of science, they're part of your life. But five minutes ago, or 40 minutes ago, we were all like, obviously two things cannot be in the same place at the same time. But what I'm saying now is, well, no, two certain kind of things can't. 
Two things that are really thingy can't. In fact, that's actually what we mean by thingy. Two tangible things can't. What do we mean by tangible? We mean the kind of things that push each other out of the way. That we mean, when we say tangible, we mean something that you think you can picture touching. What does it really mean to touch? It really means to actually, to not touch. It means to feel it when you're shoving it out of the way, right? Yeah, so I'm saying, however, there's a lot of stuff that exists like sound, two sounds can totally share the same space at the same time. They are not, that's exactly what is abstract and intangible about them. Let me give a slightly different example. And I mean it for real, like, and if you've ever, ever, ever played any musical instrument or listened to any song ever, you know this is true, right? Because you know that if it's actual music, not only is a drum beat hitting at the, your ear at the same time that the guitar note hits your ear, right? For real, better right, sometimes, but also if you've ever played like piano or any instrument, you know a lot of times you're playing chords. What is a chord? It is two different notes, two different sounds hitting your ear at the same time, not an exaggeration and not an interpretation, a fact, as much as anything is a fact. Like to hear a chord, you must, two different sounds must be occupying the same space at the same time. If you don't like that example, think about the theater. If you've ever worked in a theater, if you've ever worked with theater lights, you know you can shine a red light down on a spot on a person who's singing or whatever, and you can shine the blue light down on the spot. Definitely, there can be two lights on the same spot at the same time. And it's not because like light is so small that we can't see that. No, one light does not shove the other light out of the way. They actually share the space. Maybe they even blend and turn into a new color or something, thus demonstrating even more lights can occupy the same space at the same time. Sounds can occupy the same space at the same time. Heat can occupy the same. Electrical currents can occupy the same space at the same time. All of these things are real, but the fact that they can do that means that they're abstract. They're not particular. Like sound and ma magnetic field and electrical current and light are things that are scientific and real, but they are not particular. They are motions through space and time that are not distinct, not distinguishable, not tangible, not palpable, not particular. What they all are, you could call all of these things waves if you like. You can call them all energy if you like. You can call them all fields if you like. What I say is that ultimately what all these are and what we're studying in this course, what all of these are, is it's the travel or the propagation. We're not here to study the trajectory of particles. That's what you did in Physics 101. We're here to study the propagation of information. That's what all these things are. When sound moves through the world or light moves through the world or heat moves through the world, what's moving is not is a certain real kind of thing, but it's not stuff. It's not mass. It's not particles. It's information. That's what we're here to study in this course is this, the motion, the propagation, the flow. I should just say flow. You could just say flow of information. It's all still physics because it's motion, it's space and time. It's all the same rules, the same practices, the same principles. But the kind of things that are occupying space and time are now going to be different for us. They used to be planets and, 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 and pellets. Now they are heat waves, sound waves, not so much heat, but sound waves, electrical waves, light waves. That's what we're here to study. Thing on a spring will get us there. A thing on a spring is still like an old item for physics 101, but we're going to put a bunch of those oscillations together. And what we're going to get from that is the propagation of a wave. That's where this is all going. That's the point. I will post a lecture where I start going over physics um, homework two. Bear with me. Don't even try to do homework three yet. Don't even try it until you see that video. It's not even worth it. So as long as you've done homework one and homework two, you're good. If you think you've learned anything here to help you with homework one or one and then fix them, I'm totally done. You've been very, very patient. I'm going to hang out for two seconds if there are any questions, but if there are not, but so I'll be the last three, but you can go. You guys are very patient, very awesome. I think you get it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Sir, have you. a good night. You too. Thank you very much, you guys too. Thank you, Professor. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you very much, guys, really. And I'm going to just hang out here. Oh, thank you, Fahima. That's very nice. I totally appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, and I'm going to go away. I'm just going to turn this on in case there are